They, of course, are at Sussex from Tuesday. Kent, of course, have got T20 finals day to come at the weekend. And the home game is Middlesex to complete their campaign next week. Uh, the situation of the match is that Kent lead by 276. There will be 96 overs in the day. Minimum off, but it will only be 96. You would have thought. Uh, they lead by 276, as I say, and they have not declared. Despite the fact that we lost the whole of yesterday's play, they really could have done with batting for another hour on day two, but bad light forced us off with 10 overs of the day still remaining. So, uh, as a result, they're going to have to bat on for a bit, but there could be some fireworks here. I can see Daniel Bell Drummond has just been at the top of the uh, the stairs. He's uh, made his way down. Now he's at the top of the steps. There's uh, both people who are here now. There's uh, a few people in. I think welcomed by the uh, public address system. And the umpires are on their way out. Nick Cook and Tom Lungley. There we go. Told you. I think I'll just let John do it. It'd be probably easier, wouldn't it, for everybody? Here come the Derbyshire players. Led by their skipper, Billy Godelman. Uh, no sign of Dave Houghton here today. It appeared that Malloy was in charge of the warm-up. We will have a one-sided conversation here for listeners online. I apologise for that in advance, but it's unavoidable. And it is Daniel Beldrum and, and uh, Jordan Cox who come out to bat on time, just as a dirty great black cloud comes over the ground, but it's light enough. Uh, morning. Morning, Ian. Yes, the, the players are out in the middle. The umpires are out in the middle. And we're going to get underway on time after losing the whole of yesterday due to rain. It's actually set up what could be a very interesting final day. 96 overs. Kent have a lead of 276. They're 147 for one. They've decided to bat on before declaring. They'll have to declare at some point and then try to bowl Derbyshire out. But they want to dangle a little carrot in front of Derbyshire so that they perhaps play one or two expansive shots. So it could be a fascinating day's play here. I, I fancy they'll bat for no more than around about eight overs or so because they'll also be wary that you get a new ball after 80 overs and, of course, uh, that can be crucial as well should Derbyshire survive most of the day and get through to the last hour or so. Um, I was awake this morning at about quarter to seven. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he, 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 I've no idea why he froze the milk and then left it at home. It just seemed quite bizarre to me. I, it made little sense, but yeah, left left it left it on the yeah, left it on the training board. <laughs> What's that all about? Anyway, at least he remembered it, which I think is a bit of a triumph. <laughs> First delivery of the day has just been bowled by uh, uh, Dustin Melton, opening the bowling from the city end. He bowled to Daniel Bell. Drummond, I think. Uh, 140. Now he yeah, picked up a couple of runs. And now he's driven the ball down the ground. And Billy Goldman has slid across to try to stop it. And he hasn't stopped it. And that one won't go all the way to the boundary. So they'll come back for three. So five off the first two balls. I think we're going to see some fireworks with the bat. Bell Drummond's moved on to 22. And the 150's up for Kent. They're 152 for one, which means. Their lead is already up to 281, which is a matter of really. Uh, we're sort of we're not treading water because there's going to be some spectacular cricket, I fancy, in the opening half hour or so today. Jordan Cox, who is, uh, Ben Watts was telling us, bats a little bit quicker in red, uh, white ball cricket than he does in red, could tee off at some point. He just dabs that next delivery from Melton down into the ground, and it's uh, picked up by Tom Wood. 
This deploys back to short sleeve top with elbow guards today. Perhaps he's saving his long sleeve top for the uh, the batting to come because there will, no question, be a point at which Derbyshire will be asked to bat. There's Melton. He's in again at balls. That one's pushed out into the offside and through for the quick single. Wood has a shot at the stumps that misses. I don't think that was too far away. And Bell Drummond was a little bit slow off the mark and turns around and looks at his batting partner. 153. 4-1. Encouragement for uh, Dustin Melton. Next delivery from Melton is uh, pushed back to him by Daniel Bell Drummond. Must be a little cooler out there than uh, perhaps it has been over the course of the first two days. No play yesterday, of course. Nick Cook just rubbing his hands together, looking like he's uh, a little bit chilly. I think, I think ultimately we're just glad to see everybody out there playing some cricket, in all honesty. Nothing worse than... Uh, a game being decided by uh, by the weather as Melton finishes the over with a dot ball as the ball goes through to the wicket keeper and there's no run so 153 for one after one over five six runs added so far this morning and uh, Matt Critchley <laughs> He's going to open the bowling from the race course end. Interesting. The first result of the ball is 42 overs old now. There are even more crane flies slash daddy long legs around today than there were yesterday. It's the mating season I was. Uh, hearing on uh, Radio Derby this morning, the crane flies and spiders. They're everywhere, absolutely everywhere. <laughs> Critchley's going to be bowling to uh, J uh, Jordan Cox initially, round the wicket to the right hand and bowls to him, and he Cuts it away for a single out towards Dustin Melton, who's fielding on the cover boundary. Another single, 154 for one. Lead up to 283. What is the sufficient lead? Critchley bowls, defended by Bell and Drummond. Of course, the longer they can keep Kent out there, Derbyshire, without scoring rapidly, the greater their chances of survival. It's a fascinating day's play in prospect and so far so good from Matt Critchley. He's just dabbed down towards uh, Ed Moulton who's fielding at a uh, short third man. And Bell Drummond picks up another single. The lead goes up to 283. 155. Goes up to 284. In fact, 155 for one. Well, Drummond has 23. Jordan Cox is on 60. Next delivery goes back into his crease and cuts it away for a single out towards Dustin Melton. 156 for one. Very much an end of term feel to the written media room today with cakes and biscuits and pork pies. Being brought in by various members as a leading edge there from Daniel Baldrum. And the ball goes back to Matt Critchley as he tried to turn it into the leg side. Spoke to Matt Critchley yesterday. His next delivery goes back into his crease. Baldrum at the end of the over. 156 for one, lead 285. Spoke to Matt Critchley yesterday, talking about the prospects of. Him reaching a thousand runs, I think he's 113 shy in the county championship. Um, asked him about the the magnificent Jack Leaning catches a couple of days ago, 
and then went bang with the whammy question. A lot of speculation about your future, Matt. Can you uh, can you tell us any more about that? Don't want to talk about that stuff. So, uh, being a journalist, I've now uh, taken from that that he's leaving. Which is pretty much what I said at half time in the Derby County game yesterday when I was talking to Chris Coles. So, uh, I've made my position perfectly clear. 156 for one. Just in Melton, he's going to continue. 285, the lead. He's in and bowls. That's guided very nicely by Cox down towards third man. Where ben Aitchison has found himself now. He wasn't there before, but he is now. That means that uh, Lear's deploys moved somewhere else. There he is at mid on. Lear's deploys at mid on now. Short sleeve shirt and elbow guards, whereas uh, he did feel at one point in the long sleeve shirt, which seems to make a lot of sense to me but there we go As Melton is in and bowls to Bell Drummond who just dabs this out into the offside they go through for a very comfortable single Matt Critchley comes in from the covers to do the fielding Ben Watts is back after his uh, onerous task of updating BBC Radio Kent morning how are you not too bad thanks good good could be an exciting day's cricket, this couldn't it? could, could be an exciting I'm not promising, we're not guaranteeing. There are, you, you'll not get your money back if it isn't. As Melton is in and balls, that one is pushed up towards Lear's deploy to his right hand. He's left handed, of course, the South African, 159 for one. In a way, it's up to Kent how interesting they want to make this for the rest of us. Because if they bat on for too long, get a lead of. 350 that Derbyshire are going to struggle to get then it then Derbyshire have to just try and block out for a draw and it becomes that bit more attritional not sure not sure about Derbyshire's chances of blocking out for a draw that's the only thing as uh, Melton bowls and that one is cut away it's taken nicely by Tom Wood who has a shout the stumps at the non-striker's end it actually hits the batsman as he puts his bat down and makes his ground Bell Drummond moves on to 2560 for one. A few people getting in touch with me on Twitter at Ben Watt Sport, at BBC Kent Sport, saying, previously saying, declare overnight, fortune favours the brave type thing. I think that, was, that would have been very brave. But would then the likes of Shane as well, and this morning also, who else got in touch? Chris saying, you know, bat on for a little bit. Get a lead of 300. Stick 40 more runs on the board, something like that. Milton Bowles a short delivery, and uh, Cox has nothing to do with it. Yeah, Andrew saying, how many do you think Kent will need? Hope they don't bat on for too long. In, in all honesty, it depends what their mindset is. They've, they've certainly not gone full T20 mode, as, no, as some suggested they might. It's no. more tip and run, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A bit disappointing that I, was, I built it up really. They might try and play some big shots off Critchley, perhaps if he tosses it up. Just the one slip as uh, Melton is in, and that's whipped away. That'll be four runs out to the square leg boundary. Nice shot by Jordan Cox. Gets the boundary, moves to 67. 164 for one now. The lead is up to 293. Started the day at 276, so they're not. They're not hanging around, in fairness. They're not hanging around. And the two batsmen are having a chat. All as I would say to uh, well, well, supporters of both sides, 11 of the 23 completed innings, not just second innings, but innings in first-class cricket in the championship, certainly this season, from Derbyshire have been sub-200, which doesn't bode well for their chances of, um, chances of survival. And some of the uh, more than... The innings of more than 200 include an innings of 205 against Middlesex as well. I might have missed that one there as well, so I might have to might have to readjust that. Critchley then bowling the leg spin around the wicket to Bold Drummond, who's cutting this one away out towards the point boundary. This field is nicely spread, so there are singles out there if Kent. Had just content to take those. Derbyshire, I'm sure, would prefer to see them try a, a big shot or two and see if they can get a couple of wickets as Critchley bowls. Cut away again, this time by Cox out towards 
Short serve man, but straight to the fielder. I think they'd rather see the bat like this. Because it's going to take them longer. Just, the more time it takes out of the yeah, game, so. really. Yeah, If they start playing big shots and they come off, then Derbyshire are in trouble. Reverse sweep from Jordan Cox. That's a spectacular stroke. And he's got it inch perfect, too. That's always a boundary right for four runs. Moves to 71. Nice. Nicely played. And that's about as T20 as we've got thus far this morning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, crane flies, meet, it's the mating season. Oh, I was it? on the radio this morning. Yeah, uh, spiders and crane flies are currently uh, in the mating season, which is why there are so many of them and why they're all so active. Yeah, three daddy long legs got into my hotel room last night. It's cut away by Jordan Cox for a single out towards deep point. Yeah, there is a huge number of them. I had to turn the bathroom light on to try and trap them in there to stop them from buzzing around my head. That's horrible, that, isn't it? It's not ideal. No. But drum waits, 170 for one. Clips this away straight to short mid-wicket, who is wearing two caps on his head. I wonder what that strange shape on his <laughs> top of top with his head was. It looks like he's got two caps. It looked like he was wearing a beret. Swept hard by Bell Drummond out towards long leg for a single. Could be a marketing idea, that, of the Derbyshire Berry. Mm, I think my maths is not great, but I think that might be 300 lead. Oh. Well, my maths is even worse than your maths, I think. But I think you're absolutely right. So Kent are not going to be happy with just 300, as some suggested. I think maybe even myself, possibly at one point, suggested 300 lead, but they're going to bat on for a little bit longer. How many overs have we had so far this morning? Four. Four, yeah. Yeah. So they've added 24 in four overs, which is decent enough. Going along at six and over. The killer stat is that uh, Derbyshire in the seasons 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 have managed to win just four games here at the Encora County Ground. As Melton is in bowls wide of the off stump and it's signalled a wide. 100 now, the sun's on the scoreboard, 171, uh, 72 for one now, so we can't see the scoreboard anymore. So you had two wins in 2018, two wins in 2019, but none in 15, 16, 17, or indeed this season, didn't play here last season, of course. At any stage, mind you, they didn't play any championship matches last season, technically. Old Bob Willis trophy. That's Bell Drummond waits and Melton bowls. Drummond is driven quite violently, but nicely fielded by Matt Critchley at extra cover. And there's no run. Sun shining brightly here at the Encora County Ground, but there are grey clouds up above. I think the forecast is clear. I don't think we've got any problems uh, or will have any problems with rain as we did yesterday they promised it us yesterday and it duly arrived around about 8.30 yesterday morning and it was on and off for most of the day as this next delivery is edged up in the air down towards third man off the bat of Bell Drummond it uh, finds grass before when Madsen can reach it and he goes through for another single he'll move on to 28 173 for one That's Ben H just, just filling the crowd in on uh, Sam Connors. <laughs> he did go for a scan on his ankle yesterday. The, the unmistakable tones of Ben H with his Formby accent. He's at third man. That one is uh, a ball that takes off from a decent length. And it's taken above his head by Brooke Guest. So Dr. Ben has given his verdict. Sam Connors. I'm told he will take no further part in this game, so in fact, Kent will just require nine wickets to win. I don't know if they know that or not. I'm sure they've probably guessed. Ed Moulton has been out there for the entirety of this innings as 12th man. In place of Sam Connors is here comes Melton, and that one is uh, cut away out towards Anish Dahl on the cover boundary. 
for a single. Jordan Cox moved to 73. Kent to 174 for one. The uh, the effects microphone we use is, is, is what they call in the business as a directional effects microphone, and it's pointing straight out at the middle, so quite how it picks up everything that uh, Ben Aitchie said he's saying. It was immediately below us. I have no idea, but it did. This next one's going to be wide again. Of course it is. That was far too wide. Dusty Melton looks around and looks disappointed at that, that that's been called a wide, but as umpire Cook is pointing out, if you bowl outside what we now know to be the return crease, yes, then you're going to be wided. You'd certainly be wided in white ball cricket, and you are certain indeed to be wided in red ball cricket. And he's bowled a couple of wides in this over already, the over that keeps on giving. In again from the city, and this one's wide too and driven. It's a, a misfield by Matt Critchley, who just looks at his left hand rather ruefully as he goes to get the ball, having taken the pace off it. They get through for a single bell. Drummond moves up to 29 now, 175 for one. So Kent clearly batting on in the confidence that Derbyshire's best batsman is not going to play a part well, in the second innings. Well, yeah, top scorer in the first innings, wasn't it? I think only because he was angry. We loved it. Yeah, it was great. But I th he definitely was angry. Smacking it everywhere. Uh, Cox waits and clips this one up towards uh, the right hand again of the left-handed Lears deploy, and he gets through for a comfortable single. End of the over, 177 for one. The lead, 306. Cox on 74. <laughs> and Bell Drummond on 29. And uh, the other important figure we should keep mentioning, there are now 91 overs. Minimum, we know, but 91 overs left in the day's play. It's very rare that you get more than the 96. And they will lose two in between innings. Yeah, that's true. So I, I thought you were about to say the very important numbers are... A dozen. Well, there are a lot. They're all in front of you today, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> I've, got a a, I've got a clear, I've got a clear view down. here. Yeah. They're absolutely swarming at your end of the end of the glass. No, they're they're definitely on the other side as well. Well, I think that's I can, good. I tried to poke one, but Richley bowls a bit of a drag down. It's pulled hard into the leg side by Jordan Cox. The Leg spinner's bowling around the wicket and he's got cover at long on, deep mid wicket and deep square leg. He's also got a man on the 45, short third man cover, moving a man across actually to mid wicket. There's a deep point too. Must be a long off. Swept hard by Bell Drummond in the air and Miles for six. Into the covers that have been positioned out there in front of our old commentary box. Yes, yes, that was a, that was a decent hit, wasn't it? Not a massive amount of effort, but beautifully timed. And now poor old Anish Dahl is wandering around, trying not to step on the covers with his spikes. Of course, he might need a bit of help here. It's one of those when it's gone into the big nettle patch at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the field, and he's going to need some of his teammates. So uh, Tom Wood. Uh, Lears deploy and Ben Aitchison are all going over to try and help him find the ball. In fact, umpire Nick Cook's going over to help him find the ball as well. And uh, Anna Dahl is pulling the covers one way and then the other, trying to find this cricket ball that has disappeared. There wasn't an awful lot of cricket elsewhere yesterday either. Uh, there was enough time for uh, not to lose at Southampton. Increasing the chances, therefore, that we may... Indeed, have two divisions again next season. Who knows? Looks unlikely. Well, I don't know. It, looked, it could be a result at Cardiff, where Glamorgan are 86 for three. These are the games where they've started today. 84 for six now. They only lead Gloucestershire by 26 runs in their second innings. Northamptonshire are 184 runs behind Durham. They're 33 without loss second time around. Surrey 108 for seven in reply to Essex's 439. Uh, in this division, Middlesex are 239 for six in their second innings. That's a lead of 212 against Worcestershire at Lords. So again, they'll be looking for some kind of uh, declaration down at uh, Lords, and uh, they haven't started on time at Grace Road. They're in fact having another inspection at 10 past 11 
where Leicestershire are 291 for two and reply to Sussex is 359. Uh, that game looks to be heading absolutely nowhere. Leicestershire currently trail by uh, 68 runs, which means they'll have to uh, they'll have to bat again, of course, rather than being able to enforce the follow-on yesterday. In addition to that win for Hampshire against Nottingham, Sri Lanka should beat Somerset by uh, 10 wickets in the end, requiring just uh, 32 to eventually complete victory down at Taunton. Only play only possible in those two. I think they might have played at uh, Sophia Gardens for a short time, or even a long time. I don't think they've found the ball, but they have a new or a different ball. So they're going to continue now. That's good news. If Daniel Baldrum loses another one, he'll, he'll be asked to pay for it. I don't quite know how they've managed to lose that, to be no. honest. Critchley bowls to him and he just disdainfully just wipes it away into the leg side. Might go down there later, see if I can get myself a cricket ball. How many overs old is it? 60 overs old, isn't uh, it? Maybe is not. It? Is it? No. Maybe I won't bother. I bet you've got plenty of them at home. Four, no, 46. Make a decent net ball. Critchley bowling out to Jordan Coxfield, very bit, spread. It'll have got very wet in those covers. Uh, yeah, good point. Wide on the crease and Ooh. wide signalled actually as it balloons off the wicket keeper's shin pad. And the ground staff are now gone to have a look. Bet they find it straight away. Slogged down the ground by Jordan Cox, trying to give himself a bit of room, but it was just jammed into the ground. Well, I think the ground staff are slightly annoyed because they've rocked up the, the sheets that they'd folded very uh, nice yeah. and just left them there. So they've gone back to, uh, they look like they're pulling them out a bit. A little bit of loop and Bell Drummond, all oh, going for a big swipe into the leg side. Has managed to get a under edge, I think, through to short fine leg for a single. The ground staff like cricketers? Do ground staff hate cricketers? That's a good question. Mm, it is, isn't it? They've got it though. They've yeah. got the ball. I told you they'd find it, didn't I? Now it's been thrown on and they don't want it. No, they don't want it, Tom. Umpire Cook's already told you he doesn't want it. <laughs> a little bit this way, I'll have it. Critchley bowls. Down the wicket goes Jordan Cox. Drags this wide of long on for a single. In fairness, if you leave it to kind of dry out, then you can put it in your stash of balls. Yeah. That's 40 to 55 overs old. Happy days. I've got a message asking if we can tell Ben Edgerson that he can be heard on the uh, microphone. No, I think it's terrific. I'm not, I'm not sure we can communicate it to him, to be honest. No, he can't hear us unless he's wearing an earpiece and listening to the commentary and he would hear it 30 seconds after we've said it, so it would all be a very difficult conversation. But uh, no, I think the more we hear what creators are saying, the better. He was very polite, answered the question. When he asked about uh, Sam Connors. Didn't give anything away. Yeah, I love it when you hear stuff on the effects, Mike, to be honest. There was mm -hmm. one time where Jack Leaning took a wicket and as they're walking off, he goes, does this mean I can be in the bowler's WhatsApp group now? <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was quite easy. There was an awkward moment last season in the, uh, in the close season football matches when I apologised at the start of the second half for anything that Steve Evans might, might say in the second half because there was nobody in the ground. It's been a lot of last season apologising. <laughs> The language coming from the Gillingham bench. Uh, yeah, it's quite fruity at times. Tends not to hold back, certainly. Although he was in the stand with an upset stomach this week. Here's Dustin Melton from the City End in and bowling to Jordan Cox. He takes two steps down the track and uh, drives half stopped by Matt Critchley. And they'll pick up another single to move on to 190. 319 is the size of the lead now. He yeah, didn't hear from him. Barely saw him. No, he was yeah. sitting in the stand, wasn't he? Is it Paul Rayner? Yeah. Who was his number two? He made up for it. Yeah, he's noisy too. <laughs> there's, there's no good cop, bad cop. No, no, really. They're both just hurling, hurling on. instruction on. Full on. 
There's Melton Bolt driven into the ground and out towards the extra cover boundary. They've run one. They're going to come back for the second as well. Dahl throws the ball in, but the batsman get through comfortably enough. And uh, Daniel Bell Drummond moves on to 39. 192. For one. I'm not going to give you the lead every time because I can't work it out every time as this one is driven again out towards Anish Dahl. It'll only be a single this time and Bell Drummond's a little bit disappointed that he didn't make more of that as he swishes the bat as he wanders down to the non-striker's end. He'll move to 40. 193 for one. The lead, 322. Not quite sure what Bell Drummond was expecting of himself. Really. No, I'm not sure what, quite what else he could have done with it. It was just sort yeah. of wide half volley that he couldn't really manipulate anywhere, wasn't it? He just sort of hit it. Melton is bowling exceptionally wide of the off stump. That one's a bit close to the stumps and fuller and off the toe end of the bat. Up to uh, Liz Deploy at mid on. Cox moves to 79, 194. 4 1. Kim's have clearly got a total in mind or a number of overs that they want to bat for. Like you're saying at the moment, because we'll lose a couple of overs. They're, we're getting towards territory where they're only going to get one ball. Yes. And won't get a second new ball. Melton Bowles driven down the ground. That'll be four by Bell Drummond. It was a slightly agricultural looking shot, but very effective nonetheless. Uh, quite straight, and therefore giving Lewis Deploy no chance of coming across to cut it off at mid on. And the batsmen tap bats on their way back to their respective ends. Bell Drummond moves to 44, 198. For one now. We're almost sort of treading water. It's a, it would almost have been better for everybody. Mm. Now the two captains got together at the start of play. As it comes at Melton again. That's going to be wide, is it? No, it's not wide on this occasion. Bell Drummond is, f well, he's not happy. He's not furious, but he's not happy that that wasn't signalled a wide. 198 for one at the end of the over. The lead is up to 327. Bell Drummond has 44. Cox has 79. And come it, to some sort of arrangement. And said, look, we'd like you to chase this number of runs in this number of overs. And then you'd have a, 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 a counter from the from the Billy Godelman and said, well, I'll tell you what, yeah. we'll, 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 get, we'll have this number of overs, but we'll only chase that. Because this is where the two sides are trying to manoeuvre themselves into now. In truth... 327 is going to be an awful lot of runs yeah. for Derbyshire to chase. Kent are almost batting as Cox pulls hard into the leg side. Almost batting Derbyshire into submission at the moment as this one is fielded well. Sliding stop by Wood in the deep. They come back for two. And as we were suggesting earlier, Kent almost had it in their own powers to make this an interesting final day or not because if they bat on too long and the target is too much for Derbyshire, it just becomes... Then they're trying to just block. Down the pitch comes Cox, and he's topped it straight up in the air. And he's going to be caught by the wicketkeeper guest. And Critchley gets himself a wicket. So 200 for two, Kent, as Cox departs for 81. Well, Drummond at the non-strikers end on 44, just waiting to see if maybe this will lead to a decision. No, Jack Leaning's coming down the steps. So can they going to carry on as Cox departs for 81, which is in fact a second best score for him this season. And they haven't even done what some of us have been discussing earlier today and sent Sam Billings in ahead of Jack Leaning. I know Jack Leaning is a decent pass, but I'm, I've got absolutely nothing against him. But Sam Billings is almost renowned for his uh, short form batting. Derbyshire fielders having a, a drink. Jack Leaning comes out to the middle. The lead is uh, 329. But they would, they would only have 86 overs now. That's what I was looking to do there, wasn't I? I remember what the potential... run rate might be and at the moment it's almost four it's 3.8 which is a lot 
There is Matt Critchley. Batsman crossed, of course. Bell Drummond clips it into the leg side for a single. Matt Critchley's complaining that somebody should have fielded it. He wants the field somewhere else. He doesn't look a happy man out there at the moment, Matt Critchley, despite picking up a wicket. One for 42 from eight overs. One for 24 this morning from three overs, or one for 25 from three overs and three balls. 201 for two. Leaning on strike for the first time. Clips it into the leg side. Wood fields, no run. And that uh, new ball that Ben was mentioning a few minutes ago would come after 80 overs. Well, they'd only currently have eight overs. No, six overs with the new ball. So they're clearly not too worried about that as this one is guided very nicely into the offside by Leaning, who gets off the mark. 202 for three. So they've added 26 today in the first half hour, which is a good lick. Derbyshire would need the thick end of four and over. As that one is swept, I think that's going to get four. He is down towards the fine leg boundary. The lead, 335. I don't quite know how Ben's managed to do his update when my news bulletin still hasn't finished. It's still going. So what I'll do is I'll let you commentate. And I'll do my newsreader is very swift. And Bo Drummond batting pretty swiftly thus far. 49 not out, and that was a lovely sweep shot. Got it nice and fine away to the boundary to move to 49. So Jack leaning them, one not out. Big guy back lift anyway. How does he go about things? Just nudges it into the onside. Might as well just give Bell drum and strike in fairness. Yeah, there was no cricket in the bulletin. Oh, there you go. I don't know why I got all excited. <sighs> not for the first time. It has to be said. But there we go. Up to Bell Drummond again. 207 for two. Bell Drummond needs one for a half century. Clips this away. It will bounce once and into the hands of the deep square leg fielder. Bell Drummond will get 50. So back to back half centuries for Daniel Bell Drummond in this game. Following on from a, a championship or a second team championship century last week and I mean, just got 100 all season in this format. This is, well, much relief in the burst of form for him. Leaning just playing this square out towards deep point. It strikes me rather of a club cricketer who's just come into form right at the end of the season, yeah, only to find annoying, that yeah, he's only got, only got one game to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it happens a lot, doesn't it? form of their life <laughs> and then the season ends and, the season and you pack your kit over. away for the winter and shove it in the attic Melton Bowles a bit of a hoik from Bell Drummond gets it off a bottom edge into the leg side for a single that happened to me a bit last year had a nice little knock on a Sunday end of season came back the next start of this season thinking oh yeah thinking just, oh, I've had a great a decent winter of nets as well got runs last time out then cricket has a way of humbling you oh yes oh. chipped away into the leg side drops short at the fielder actually it was a low full toss and Jack leaning somewhat towed it up towards long on He moves to three. At the moment, he's just giving Bell Drummond the strike, which is fairly wise. 
two eleven for two. Keeping an eye on this Kent lead, which is now two four or three forty. Sorry, so this one's driven away hard and well fielded by Critchley at cover. Not going to miss him. And that might be it. That might be the declaration. There we go. Well, Drummond and Leaning are walking off. So two hundred. And 11 for two is Kent's declaration. 340 is the lead. Derbyshire will need 341. A nominal target, really, to go and win this game. In 85 overs, I reckon, because that was the end of the... Or there were 87 to go, so we'll lose two now. So 340 in uh, 85 overs means they will need exactly... This is remarkable. Exactly four and over to win this game from here on in. 211 for 12. Daniel Bell Drummond, 51. Jack Leaning, four. The only man out today, Jordan Cox, for 81. So the game is on here at the county ground. And when it resumes, we'll be on as well. In the meantime, we'll just take a, a swift break and see if they've actually got any tea bags with caffeine in it in the kitchen.
I count the heavy rollers uh, done its job on the actual pitch and it's now just doing a job on another pitch for some reason or not playing here again this season so uh, I'm not entirely sure what that's all about but they've done another job 212 for two declared a lead of 340 so the target is 341 <laughs> makes perfect sense to me that so in fact they will require oh, I've just written 340 again they will require it's 4.01 and over not 4 and over 4.01 and over 85 overs remain in the day's play and out come the Derbyshire openers Harry came who came to a a rather disappointing end at the end of day one seems like a lifetime ago when he uh, failed to negotiate a delivery uh, bowled by Grant Stewart and Billy Godelman but it will be Harry Kane who faces the first ball of the innings again and it'll be Harry Podmore again who bowls it a couple more players out there without sweaters on which is terrific news for me Jordan Cox still nicely warmed up after his batting this morning. The only man out, he made 81. Matt Critchley, the bowler, catch taken by Brooke Guest. It wasn't a little nick through, though. It was an absolute sky up as he looked to push the score on. Heavy roller makes his way off. Neil Godrich will just turn it off now. There we go. Excellent work. We won't hear anything else from Ben Aitchison either, which is disappointing. <laughs> down below. He's enjoying his commentary yeah, in Lama. Yeah, no, he was good. And we're underway. Harry Podmore bowling from the city end. And the came pushes this one out into the offside. And there is no run. I don't think it would be good if Derbyshire tried to just block. I'll say that here and now. I'm not sure. I, well, no, I'm not sure that Derbyshire can win this. I know they can't win it. Um with that nominal target of 341 it will be some victory from here as Podmore is in and that's left alone by Kane Ball goes through to Robinson behind the stumps they've got uh, three slips and a gully point mid off mid on mid wicket there'll be a long leg I'll have a look and check yeah, there he is well, look who it is. It's Grant Stewart and he's warming up. Away to our left-hand side. Centre forward. Number nine on his back. Podmore, goalkeeper. Balls to Kane. He's got one on his back. What if Harry Podmore is a goalkeeper? Why would Harry Podmore take the number one? It's a bold move. It is bold, isn't it? I think so. For a bowler, it's a bold move. Grant Stewart being number nine, I can't imagine being... From his background, he was really a footballer, a soccer player. Mm -hmm. Would have been more Aussie rules. Ooh, so he's, uh, oh, could be NRL then. Yeah, he's a big lad, isn't he? Uh, Pop more balls left alone by came to go through to the keeper. There might be an awful lot of that over the course of the next uh, 84 overs and four balls. Or however long it lasts. I, I, I might be wrong, but I think the number that Harry Pommel wanted was taken. Mm. Possibly the 23 that Bell Drummond has. And then he turned around and she said, oh, I should have one then. Wow. But Most of the numbers don't make a lot of sense, though, do they? The next delivery is turned into the leg side by Kame. He takes a single gets up to the other end and so far this has followed pretty much the same pattern as the first innings because Harry came he's now up the end where he might be facing Grant Stewart who dismissed him with the first ball that he bowled to him on Sunday evening I mean Billings is a massive Man United fan and therefore has number seven so you can see where, where right. that comes from oh dear He's from Manchester, obviously. <laughs> Is he? No. No, no he's not. Where, where are all of Man United's fans from? <laughs> Pop more balls to Godelman, who takes a quick single here, as Jazz Singh does the fielding. They get through comfortably, and it means that Godelman will face Grant Stewart, because that's the end of the over. Two without loss after the first over. Derbyshire, 
the runs required down to 339, which very helpfully is just in the bottom right-hand corner of the board. Grew up near to the M25. Yeah. I don't want to get involved in that, but you're absolutely right. Because when they, the Sky Sports News were... were because they couldn't show any of the goals on Saturday night because they, they haven't got the rights at that, yeah, that yeah. time. They were outside Old Trafford speaking to all the supporters and the accents. All the southerners that yeah. were lot, heading home to Surrey. A lot of Irishmen. See you on the motorway. <laughs> well, I think we both support teams whose fan base is fairly local. Yeah. This is true. And... and so no. we like to take the um, mick out of those yeah, that much, don't support their local team. Much better for it, absolutely. Grant Stewart then, opening the bowling for Kent. Doesn't take a wicket with his first ball this innings as it's pushed away by Goderman out towards point. Having on, yeah, like you say, the first evening. A while ago that, wasn't it? Cleaned up Harry Kane with his first ball that he bowled. Five for 23 in 13 overs in the first innings. Magnificent bowling. You had a chat to both him and to to Jack Leaning at the same time. It's not normally something you do. But it was quite good fun having the, the pair of them as balls down the leg side and he's quite self deprecating Grant. He's not really one to big up in his own achievements. He's just like, Oh yeah, you know, nice to get five wickets. Said which one compared to this one and the pink ball one was his favourite and said, Oh, you know, your first one's always <laughs> important and and then Jack chimes in and it's like I think he's doing himself a bit of a service he bowled unbelievably well yeah fully deserved his opportunity with a new ball and boy did he take it type stuff and then Jack will be like oh well you know I'll just take it the old good catch <laughs> <laughs> played off the back foot out towards probably worked out quite well then wide mid off and then Grant turns around and goes yeah, I think it was possibly the best catch I've ever seen yeah ridiculous catch the second one or the fourth one he said the celebration was mostly just disbelief that he'd held on and then just went for a bit of a lap around the pitch <laughs> and ran into Podders for a big cuddle, was the quote, Harry Podmore. But yeah, still funny, just seeing him rip the hat off and the sunglasses go flying. It's full delivery from Grant Stewart, which is defended by Goderman, out towards Billings. And then he did also add that Oh, my dad will probably try and claim some credit. Mm. And I said, oh, you know, what was it like in the back garden type thing? Did, was he, you know, feeding you catches or et cetera? And he was like, well, no, to be honest, I, he like they would when they played football in the back garden, he'd be the one shooting and dad would be in goal. He, he, said, <laughs> he said, I was, I thought, I like to think I was a bit too sensible to be a goalkeeper. <laughs> Stuart Bowles. And this one's defended away. How many he got past a, a professional goalkeeper though in the back garden? I mean, I don't know how many he scored, but he was certainly <laughs> trying. <laughs> Brilliant. We spoke to two players together for the first time in the previous match. Anish Dahl and Brooke Guest after their standard 227. And they, were, they again, were self-deprecating. It's, it's, it's almost useless. Stuart Bowles, defended nicely by Goddard took into the gap on the offside and he comes through for a run to get himself on to one. He has the scoreboard already updated. No, 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 he's, no, no that's two, his second. There you go. Yeah, second. Two for him, one for game, three without loss. This will be the first time they've batted together properly, I'm certain, in red ball cricket. Because the only other time they batted together, uh, Harry Kane had played in the first team in the championship that came against Essex, I'm 100% certain, yeah. Well, Harry Kane didn't come in till number, number six anyway, but Billy Goldman was missing at the time, so missing in action. I thought that was the case. Just wanted to prove it to myself. So the target 338 from 82, 83 over. The other one's not happy. Not ready, hasn't marked his guard properly yet. <laughs> Has now. <laughs> he just stood there with his arm aloft. Not ready. If this is a true story, Liam Knight from Kent's media team, this is brilliant. Excellent. 
Is it, uh, can you read it out loud? Yeah. Oh, good. Podmore balls. That's left alone by uh, Godwin to go through to the keeper. <laughs> okay, so on the Harry Podmore number, Liam Knight goes, don't be silly, Ben. It's Podders. I asked him why he chose number one, and he replied, completely deadpan, because there's only one Harry Podmore. No. <laughs> wow. Sure, is that a true story, Liam? I, wow. I really hope it is. I do too. Good grief. Pop more balls. It's turned into the leg side by Godelman for a single. He must have taken that off his pads right in front of the stumps there. Godelman moves to 3 4 without loss. Yeah, that would be good. I, 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 he clearly wouldn't have worn number one when he came here on loan from Middlesex because Billy Godelman has been here the entire time since I've been commentating. So, uh, and has always been number one. Yeah, I see opening batsman or a captain wearing one kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, although Billy Godman generally goes down as two on score cards because he seldom faces the first delivery, if ever. It's usually down to Lewis Reese. As Kame waits and turns this down to a fine leg for a couple of runs, in fact. Kame has raced all the way back. That's good running from Harry Kame. It was a no ball as well. So, uh, Harry Podmore overstepping. I don't get opening batsman's shyness from being number one, wanting to not face the first ball innings and coming in number two. Yeah, no, I don't really. Well, I never really, I could never really bat, so it would never have been a problem that would have occurred in my. Uh, you couldn't call it a career playing cricket. As uh, Bob Moore is in, and one is guided with soft hands down into the. Gully region, nice stop by Bell Drummond diving away to his left hand side. Eight without loss, incidentally, after the two plus the two for the no ball. Really is the first ball of the match an absolute unplayable Jaffa. No. No. That gets you out straight away. So you generally will get a look. I got out on the opening over of a game this season batting four. <laughs> so you know, you might as well face the first ball. <laughs> Pop more balls, it's struck on the thigh pad, I think. That might have been too high. I think it was bat into the thigh I think the it was pad. bat into the thigh yeah. pad. Sorry, I just turned the music up in my ears momentarily because I'm due on in a moment. Um, but yeah, turned down by Nick Cook. It remains eight without loss. 333 more runs required. I think that over, by the way, went wide wicket, dot wicket. I got a bounce the first ball and then got bowl the next ball. So the number five was in for the final ball of the first over the game. So one for four. That's this one. <laughs> one for three, yeah. One for three. Yeah. Turned into the arm. And the number two was sat there on the striker's end, watching this carnage <laughs> take place. And as I'm walking off, he's, he's, he's come and met me and said, I mean, I don't want to rub this in you as you're walking off and you're out, but what is he doing? Out? Like, what is... is <laughs> What, what is it doing that I'm not seeing from the non strikers end? Absolutely nothing. Just missed the ball, mate. Here's Bob Ball. Here we go, balls to Kame, who defends that one off the back foot. It's the end of the over. Eight without loss after three overs of the Derbyshire second innings. The target is nominally 341. They need another 333 to get there they now have uh, 82 overs in which to get them so it's uh, it's unlikely to be charitable I would suggest update coming up for uh, BBC Radio Derby's FM listeners fairly shortly after a song by somebody I've never heard before this one is turned into the leg side by Billy Godman which isn't a major surprise. There's a lot of songs I've never heard before that are played on radio stations. The over eight is uh, plus four, so they've got no problems with that. I didn't look to see what Derbyshire's finished up at, actually. Some Billings has just had a word with Daniel Bell Drummond. Three slips in the gully. As Grant Stewart is on his way and again, left alone by Billy Godelman outside the Austin, through to the keeper. It's the one wicket this morning, Jordan Cox for 81. Daniel Bell Drummond made 
51. Jack leaning four. Declaring on 211 for two. Eventually. Stuart turns at the... Ah, uh, Justin Bieber is on his way in. And Bowles and Godwin. Oh, there's a shot at the stumps. Yes, well, Kent have declared, or they did declare a few minutes ago, 211 for two. Daniel Bell Drummond, 51. Jordan Cox, the only man not out. He made 81 this morning. Jack leaning four. That gave them a lead of 340 over Derbyshire. And Derbyshire have 85 overs in which to score 341. Or more likely, Kent have 85 overs in which to get nine wickets because Sam Connors won't bat, we understand. He, he twisted his ankle in the first innings. Uh, didn't bowl at all in the second innings either. So he will not come out to bat today so they only need nine wickets Ken and Derbyshire have started okay they're eight without loss both Harry Kame and Billy Godelman the two openers have three apiece so they just need another 333 from uh, 81 overs and uh, four balls yeah well They've never, they've never been going at four and over in the entire, well, the entire season, in all honesty, but certainly not in the first innings. They didn't go at four and over, which is what they would need, and the pressure. Um, so, yeah, it's unlikely. If they could hold out for a draw from this position, it would be a really good effort, a really good effort, but they're going to have to fight really hard for it. Well, I don't generally try. I try not to stand on them if I possibly can. I'm not that kind of bloke. Um, now Billy goldman has been sent back. There's a shot at the stumps there, and it missed. And, and uh, there's a huge puff of dust. Um, but there are thousands of them here. We've been talking about them throughout the game. We've had them. They just basically stick to the window, and and you're looking through Daddy Longlegs and Glass to see the cricket. It's remarkable. I'm not a big fan of them, I've got to say, but um, I wouldn't stand on one. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I oh no see I knew it was the mate we thought <laughs> we thought we thought it was the mating season either that or they're all practicing their wrestling hmm <laughs> right Oh, well, these are all sort of the same size, so I can imagine these must be the, the indigenous ones, are they? Ben, ben did tell me that the, he, he, got, he had three in his hotel bedroom. He's staying in the hotel on the ground uh, from Radio Camp, Ben Watts. Uh, and he, he, he cleverly put his bathroom light on and left the door open, and they were all attracted in there, so he trapped them in the bathroom. Yeah, clever. <laughs> yes. Tip. Oh. <laughs> uh, there hasn't been a run. There was just that slight alarm for Billy Godelman as he was sent back by Harry Kane. Big puff of dust as he got back into his ground. He, he played out the final ball of the Grant Stewart over. And now Harry Podmore's first delivery has been uh, defended by... Harry came. It's still eight without loss. Both batsmen on three apiece. They still need 333. And there are 80 overs and five balls left in the day's play as Pop Moore is into came. And that one's down the leg side. He, he tries a little flick at it towards it, but it goes through to the keeper harmlessly enough in the end. And once again, there's no run. A fair few spectators in. A few huddled at the back of the East Midlands demolition stand there. Good sprinkling over on the grandstand side of the ground as well. Members' pavilion balcony has uh, is relatively well populated, as is the permanent temporary stand at the far end of the ground. People continue to arrive for the cricket today as Popmore bowls to Cam and he clips this away very nicely. That'll be four runs, will it? No. Stewart gets around, stops it just inside the rope, and they come back for two. That's good work by Grant Stewart. Kane moves on to five from 13 deliveries. Derbyshire move into double figures. They're 10 without loss in their second innings. It's a nice shot. 
off his toes from there he came the, the tweet we've been waiting for has arrived from David Griffin I'm delighted to say about targets as this next delivery is wide of the off stump but left alone by Harry came to go through to the keeper the uh, 341 runs that Derbyshire require to beat Kent the previous best to beat Kent is 298 for 8 at Derby in 2012 and Derbyshire have made more than 341 to win on just three occasions the one that we always mention the 371 they required to beat the Australians in 1997 again they won by one wicket this next delivery is again down the leg side there's a half appeal um, but it didn't touch glove or bat on its way through to the keeper the 365 they scored against Nottinghamshire in the Bob Willis Trophy in 2020 in the game that if it hadn't have happened nobody would have thought that Derbyshire were a good side and the 350 against Northamptonshire in 19. 82. So just three times Derbyshire have made 341 or more, in fact more than 341, to win a game of cricket. The Podmore stops because uh, poor old Harry Kane has got uh, a fly buzzing around his face. As I say, the previous best to beat Kent here is 298 for 8 in 2012. So thanks to David Griffin for that. It's a stat I've been waiting for or well, the tweet I've been waiting for at least as this next delivery goes past the edge of the bat has it taken the edge of the bat Podmore thinks so but umpire Cook doesn't and as a result came survives and he just points down and says that might have been the bat against the pad the noise you heard there uh, Podders came remains on five Godelman on three ten without loss and the batsmen have a chat it is the end of the over Podmore looked fairly convinced there that he'd got his man. Yeah, they all seemed pretty keen, didn't they? Mm. We've had a, a couple of emails, or messages at least, in mm. getcricket at gmail.com and also on Twitter. We've got Ben Watt Sport, BBC Kent Sport, if you want to get in touch with Fletch specifically. And Stuart is in and bowling and Goldman is pushing this one out towards seems unlikely. point. It's fletchcricket at gmail.com or at Fletch Sport on no Twitter. No idea how you remember that. So the people that have got in touch so far today, we're talking about opening the batting and not wanting to face the first ball. Mm. Stuart getting in touch saying, the only opener I can think of who never ever faced first ball was none other than Rob Key. Ah. Worth asking him why. I, I think I could probably guess why. He just doesn't want to be out first ball of the innings. <laughs> This one's driven away square by Goddaman. Lovely stroke. Out towards cover point boundary. And the score up to 14 without loss as Goddaman moves to seven. And in Rob Key's eyes, you know, junior partner, you can face the first ball and tell me what the heck's going on. Yeah. If this bowler's swinging it or doing anything with it. So I can, I would be very surprised if it was anything other than those reasons. Um, James Bambridge on the email saying on the subject of opening the batting and facing first I always wanted to if you get a Jaffa you have an excuse of being first up most likely you get a loosener which you can stick into Gal Corner it's quite aggressive I mean I, yeah I, I, that's not how I have the batting no. really, cause I can't, can't hit the boundary very often but mine's more third man <laughs> edge one wide of the slips this is a decent ball from Stuart a little bit of lift which hits high on the back Goldman nudges it away into the onside this makes perfect sense unless you do get out and have to umpire for the 20 overs after the dark depths of village cricket. Yes, the old uh, standing at square leg to square leg umpire. I mean, I'd rather have to do square leg umpire than have to score, in fairness. Yes, you know, I think I would. I would. We had an incident with a square leg umpire a couple of weeks ago in a Sunday match. Here comes Stuart. Oh, Codderman does well to keep this out. Getting right forward. A full, fast and straight delivery. You can't give your mate run out, can you? Really. It was bad form. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the Sunday as well. A little, bit, a little bit close, I think, possibly. Speaking of run out, that quick single that Godman attempted and then turned back and Billings almost had him would have been close. If that was I think it would. It was an enormous puff of dust, wasn't it? Mm. Terrific. 
Which I'll try it out. Is it out on the square? More emails in a moment as Ooh. Stuart's in. 14 without loss, Derbyshire. Needing this one's pushed away. A nominal 3 4 1 to win the game. I was going to pose the question actually. What do people think about that? Should they have declared overnight? Have they got, you know, should, should they have declared a bit earlier? Kevin's saying, or almost putting the question back at us, do you think Kent should have pulled out at 300 lead or with, say, 90 overs to go, gives the Kent, uh, gives Kent the chance to go with a second new ball if things don't go as planned? Secondly, do we know if Adam Milne is at T20 finals day? He's not. He's gone to the IPL. So Kent will be missing him at Edgbaston. But hey, like for like replacement, Darren Stevens might play. <laughs> Stuart Bowles. Stuart's an option as well. He didn't play in the quarterfinal. This one's pushed away out towards backward of point. Dot ball. So certainly this week with the five wickets that he's picked up, he's showing that he's a potential replacement. As we're going to get some jumpers and sanitizer and drinks and caps and loads of stuff being brought out by substitute fielders. He hasn't conceded many runs either, has he? Which is uh, another prerequisite for T20 cricket if you can avoid conceding runs. It's always useful. You're in the, you're in the afternoon semi-final, you say? Yeah. I can't miss that. You've got to get to the final now. Then. Otherwise, I can't Otherwise see it's a bit, be of, at, uh, bit of a waste of a day. Crusty Road on, on Saturday. Yeah, somebody else is getting the pleasure of Breezefield for the weekend. Matt and I are both hot for you to Of course. Bank sandwiches, nine o'clock. Don't miss them. Nine o'clock? Oh, yeah, it's early. And the first game's about half yeah, ten, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it? so. Mm, I can't promise I'll be out of the hotel at that point. I would if I was you. They're very good. We can have breakfast at the hotel and then. Yeah, well, absolutely. Again, That's one. Yeah, sandwiches. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Harry Podmore begins a new over from the city end, bowling to Harry Kane, who pushes it out into the offside when it's fielded by Sam Billings. And there's no run. Yeah, I'd get there as early as you can. Don't eat much the day before. Or take a large bag. It was a terrific, well, it was a terrific spread in 2019. And indeed, in the other, I've been to a couple of T20 finals days before that. As Pop more bowls again. Kane turns it into the leg side. Uh, a little bit off the bottom end of the bat. Yeah, I've never been to one, not as a fan, mm. not as a reporter. Kent have lost three out of three court finals in the last six seasons since I started this job. Just teasing you. It's about time they got me to a final yeah. day, in fairness. Yeah. Forget them. Forget Billings and Blake and Bell Drummond. I mean, never been to one. I haven't been to one yet. <laughs> Which is come more on, important. Come on, lads. Yeah. Well, they yeah. and they finally, well, they got, they bucked their own ideas up this year. Okay, he waits. He edges this one down into the ground, just to the right of Bell Drummond. Four runs down to a wide third man, but he wasn't in complete control of that shot. Harry came. He does move up to nine now and Darvish to 18 without loss. But to suggest he was in control of that would be wrong. 323 runs off 78 and a half overs required. Or nine wickets, as we now understand it, for Kent with uh, Sam Connors taking no further part in this game. And that, uh, I imagine it's ankle ligament damage, but he's certainly got a twisted ankle mm. that he uh, suffered whilst batting, ironically. Came just flexes his knees as he waits, and this next delivery from Pop Moore's outside the off stump allowed to go through to Robinson. Got a lovely email in from Peter, which I'll get to in a minute. It's a little bit long, but it's quite nice, so I'll, I'll try and get through. Okay. Get through all of it, maybe when this over ends. And so midway through, Stuart deliveries, etc. Some buildings are just going to cross there, and uh, I think it's Nathan Gilchrist who's filled to get mid wicket. He's just had a word with him. Presumably to tell him when he might be bowling, if that is Nathan Gilchrist. It's quite like mid wicket, that kind of area. This one's pushed back to uh, Sam Billings, and there's no run. It, it, it forced quite an extravagant movement from uh, Jazz Singh, who had to come across from mid on to catch the ball that was going to go back to Harry Podmore because Billings was absent from his usual position. But uh, Important business with Gilchrist to attend to. Pop 
Morris in again. Bowls to Harry Kane, who just guides this down into the ground to the left this time of Bell Drummond. Uh, Jack Leaning chases it down, and they come back for two. And Kane moves into double figures. He's on 11, Derbyshire 20 without loss after seven overs of the 85 available to Kent to force a victory in this match. And they'll be relatively pleased with the way things have started. Just a couple of mix-ups, one slightly more alarming than the other with the running between these two. Well, ever Billy Godelman is out in the middle. There was almost certainly going to be a mix-up at some point. He's on seven. So Peter's email that I just mm. teased a moment ago is titled, We're Still Listening. Excellent. Good, is, good to know. Which is great to know. <laughs> Sometimes we just think we're talking to ourselves. Well, I do it at home. No reason why I shouldn't do it here. <laughs> it's great. Stuart's about to... <laughs> Well, to be honest, I do it to myself as well. And then you walk past someone and they, they think you're real odd, don't they? <laughs> Just vocalising your thoughts. Pushed away out towards extra cover. He says, hi, chaps. Despite the PTB, which I've slowly realised is powers of the B, oh. doing their best to deprive us of proper cricket and consign the back end of the county championship to the bin. We're still out there hanging on your every word. I watched the day two stream last night and was reassured to see that the grass was still green. The sky was... Blue slash cloudy slash grey, <laughs> often all at once. <laughs> Players were wearing cable knits. The ball was red and batting and bowling were a challenge. As Stewart is in and bowling once more. Clipped out towards wide mid on, but straight to Podmore. He says, I hope and pray that there are still tea and cakes at Scarborough and Worcester or we're in serious trouble. I've been to Derby several times to see Kent and would like to recommend the experience, especially when combined with some fine walks in the peaks. Keep us informed about those daddy long legs. By the way, I thought that Grant Stewart had found a bit of extra pace and looked significantly more threatening. Come on, Kent, in this one and the T20 finals. The so-called lesser clubs need to keep posting reminders. Ask Essex. Thanks for your efforts over the last couple of years. This one's driven away nicely by Godelman. Out towards extra cover for a boundary and thus far... Yeah, it's been pretty good contest between bat and ball. Yeah. 24 without loss. Well, it's, it's, that's a very nice email, and I'd, I'd like to add my thanks to that as well. But you're absolutely right. The smaller counties need to keep uh, punching above their weight. To just to remind the ECB, who clearly want to get rid of us, them, um, <laughs> that uh, that they are worthy of a place at the top table in, uh, in English cricket. Um, Speaking of Matt Critchley yesterday, before I came out with a killer question, and, uh, and he basically shut up and walked off, um, which is very much how the interview ended, sadly. Uh, he said it was still doing a bit, but if you if you got yourself in, he thought that you were okay on this pitch. That was an interesting comment from uh, Critchley. He made 27 from 27 balls. I mean, he, he wasn't necessarily in, but he was scoring runs quite freely until the moment that he got out. So uh, he still thinks there's a bit in it for both batters and bowlers, which is interesting. Stewart around the wicket, changing his line of attack to Godeman. Almost the same result, but should just be hauled in by James Logan running down towards wide third man. Three runs, in fact. Take him as the throw comes in. So thus far, a good start from the two openers. Godeman 17 and... Came is on 11. I think, unless the scoreboard's beaten me uh, to it. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> oh, no, I pressed the wrong button now as well. Um, yeah, I think he is. I only call it the killer question because it killed the interview. That's why 14, got him at 11, came 27 for one. I think we, yeah. maybe the three runs had already been added on. Three slips in a gully as Stewart is in. Oh, edge, gone. There's the wicket. An extra bounce as well for Grant Stewart. As Harry Kane looked to try and fence at that, defend his off stump. And maybe that email we just had about Grant Stewart's extra pace certainly looked like there was a little bit of extra zip there. And Robinson took it around about kind of lower rib, waist height, 
to his right it was definitely a little bit of extra bounce for Stewart that has done for Kane and maybe commentators saying about how well Derbyshire had started as well 27 for 1 as Kane goes for 11 if you had the ability to affect the play by just by saying something you wouldn't be doing this anymore <laughs> we'd be we'd, we'd all be millionaires that is true yeah Big test here for Lee's deploy, but that was good delivery. Another good delivery, six wicket in the match for, for Grant Stewart, who's bowled beautifully from the race course. And they've got to see him off here, but he's only in his fourth over. And he didn't exactly over exert himself from memory. I, I've forgotten already how many overs he bowled in the first innings. I, I have got it written down somewhere, but it wasn't like he, he got through a mountain of overs either, was it? So uh, he, he shouldn't be exhausted in any way, I would suggest. And if he is, he needs to get himself in the gym. But he doesn't look like he needs to get in the gym. 13 overs he bowled in the first innings for his five. He's only in his uh, fourth over here. One of those strange sequences of deliveries. 4-3 wicket. So while uh, Billy Godelman, Godelman was moving up to 17... Poor old Harry came is the first man out. Got uh, one in the first innings, 11 in the second. But he's got a contract for next season and the season after, so he's OK. Oh, oh being a bowling. Shout for LBW, and it's two in two for Grant Stewart. And deploy goes LBW. The finger raised by the umpire. Full delivery on the stumps. Certainly deemed to be by the umpire, and... Well, he said it was going to be a tough little moment for Deploy. And really, that's all it is. A brief moment at the crease. In and out. First ball duck. 27 for none. Becomes 27 for two in a flash. A combined no runs from three deliveries in this match for the number three batsman, Lias Deploy. Doesn't want to bat number three. He's made that perfectly clear. Or well, certainly the club have made it clear that he and Wayne Manson, neither of them want to bat at number three. Somebody's got to do it. And they've got to sort it out as soon as possible. But he's out for a <laughs> for a first baller in the second innings, having got a second baller on Monday. He became the first of two victims in and over that day as well. It wasn't a hat trick, or he wasn't on a hat trick, which he will be uh, come the beginning of the next over, Grant Stewart. But that's now seven in the match for Stewart and Derbyshire. Well, we were talking about a good start. All that work's been undone, and here comes Wayne Madsen. Beginnings for Wayne Madsen, you'd have to say. This season in the county championship, he's only played in, uh, this is only his 11th match, but he's only got 447 runs, averaging 26.29 with the bat. Big test for Wayne Madsen with, what, uh, 37 minutes or so to go until the T interval. You know when we were talking about coming in and getting a Jaffa first ball? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty, a pretty decent ball. It forward did, forward yeah. swinging on the stumps. That's that's not the nicest one you want it's to get decent. first ball. But should you not, when you when you were a number three batsman, expect a good ball? Well, yeah, you probably want to try using your bat, don't you? <laughs> Ideally. 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 It's, not always, it's not always that easy, but he has kind of padded up to that one. Dan Shaw in Northern Ireland sent us an email, which is very kind of you, Dan. Thanks for keeping me going in work, he says. Commentary helps see the day in Keep Up the Good Work, lads. Well, we'll do our best. As long as people want to employ us, we'll be... Uh, we'll we're, be we're quite we'll, happy to sit here and watch yeah, cricket, yeah. We'll, we'll be here, won't and we? And talk to you about it. Podmore begins a new over from the city and to Billy Goldman. Push it out to the offside. They're going through for a quick single. There's a shot at the stumps. Oh. I'll tell you what, Wayne Madsen would have been out without facing a delivery had that one hit from Sam Billings. He can't quite believe that he's missed it, in all honesty, because he wasn't a million miles away. He probably had a stump and a half, two stumps to aim at. And they've scampered through for a single. I'm not sure risky singles are the order of the day for Derbyshire, but hey-ho, what do I know? Wow, that wasn't far away at all. 100, uh, 100, what am I talking about? Um... That's because it says it there, 147. Why does that say 100? There we go, that's better. 28 for two Goldman up to 15. So Wayne Madsen to face his first delivery of the second innings. Derbyshire 
clinging on by their fingertips as Podmore bowls too many goes back into his crease and pushes it out towards the cover boundary. That might even go all the way for four. It's been chased by Billings, but he can't get there. And Wayne Madsen, cool as you like, gets off the mark with a boundary. And Darby should move on to 32 for two. Nice shot, but it was the, it was there to be played. The shot from a slightly short delivery went back into his crease and forced the ball away into the offside. Nicely done by Madsen. Taps his bat in the crease and waits for Podmore to come in again. And that one's left alone outside the off stump to go through to keeper Robinson. Only 309 required to win now. Seven wickets. It would be extraordinary. Extraordinary. What a victory this is going to be for Derbyshire. <laughs> I have to get that in early before it all falls in a big heap. But or to say you could preempt one of the greatest run chases ever. Yes. Derbyshire's fourth highest successful run chase this would be. That one's played out to backward point. There's no run. It is always remarkable that Derbyshire's highest successful run chase, of course, is the victory by a wicket over the Australians. It has never made any sense to me. Kevin Dean scoring the winning runs. Morning, Kevin, if you're watching or listening as this next delivery takes a couple of steps down the track, Wayne Madsen, and turns it into the leg side where it's fielded by Nathan Gilchrist. We have to get 341 for nine to beat Australia in a tour match is uh, a good effort. Back in 1997. Yeah, that, that is very good. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's really good. And when the Australians were here last time, which was 19, wasn't it? Um, we had Kevin Dean up in the box with us for a short time. Who knows? Derbyshire's next director of cricket. I don't mean head of cricket. I mean director of cricket. You know what I'm talking about, Kevin. There's a vacancy going, isn't no, there? No, there isn't. For, for head of cricket. Well, there's, ah, head yeah, of, but there's one for head of cricket, yeah. yes. There isn't one for the director of cricket at the moment. This one is left alone outside the off stump. And it goes through... To the keeper, the, no, the director of cricket actually said that uh, Dave Houghton was his appointment and if it wasn't a success, it would be his responsibility. The silence is deafening. End of the over, 32 for two. Manson has four. Godwin has 15. Grant Stewart's on a hat-trick. Somebody tweeting a stumped blog saying, what is Grant Stewart having on his cornflakes this week? Mm. What, whatever at the fancy Priory Hotel that they've been staying in has been feeding them. Is that where they are? Well, they were. Yeah. I'm assuming they've checked out. Yes, they, yeah, you'd, you'd expect they probably would have done one by now. Unless, well, actually, they might still be staying there. I don't oh. know. For a, well, you, they'll stay up here I now, I think they, they are staying Yeah, up, no yeah, point going so back and then driving up again, is it really? I don't nice. know when they're moving on to Edgbaston. So, hatchery ball then for Grant Stewart. In and bowling. Defended by Billy Godham and out into the cover area. It was full and it was swinging. It was pretty much the ball he bowled to deploy, but Goldman's faced a few more and used the bat. I'd like to see the stat on how many hat-trick balls collectively the county commentators have uh, commentated on and how many they've seen. Because I don't think I've commentated on a Derbyshire hat-trick. In fact, I'm certain I haven't. But I have commentated on hat-trick balls. Hmm. There's been two hat tricks in games involving Kent this year. Uh -huh. Stuart Bowles. Oh, that one flies out towards Gully. And away for four runs. Thickish outside edge, really, from Billy Godderman. Moves to 19, 36 4 2. So Chris Green got one for Middlesex. Right. In a T20 against Kent. And then Adam Mill got one also in a T20 against. I can't remember. No. I wasn't commentating but I was watching it from afar I think I was on a stag do and, you weren't and no, nobody knew anything you weren't about split then. No, no no I was I think I was in Wiltshire oh, okay. and nobody and nobody on the stag do really quite appreciated cricket or know anything about cricket and so I was having to kind of contain this 
excitement for myself. You'll never guess what's happened. Yeah. Well, Someone took what? three wickets in three balls and Kent have won this game. People are shrugging their shoulders. Yeah. yeah. What is that? Yeah. So. Yeah. We've what? got we've got another tray of sambukas here. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine other drinks I don't think I've ever had one of those but I, think, I believe that's what the kids drink these days Stuart in and an inside edge down towards long leg yeah some people don't like the taste of Sambuca because it's kind of licorice is it okay I don't mind it personally so it's a bit pernoy tastes a bit like you just swallowed a bag of uh, licorice all sorts all right. mm. Been a bit or been shoved down your throat more, like, more would be a more of a <laughs> description. Lovely. Yeah. So Madsen on to strike then four for him. Three slips in gully is Grant Stewart trying to add to the five wickets they got in the first innings and now two and two balls and actually no ball which has been spanked away. That is a delightful drive from Madsen. That will add mm. six onto the, uh, the scorecard. Less than 300 now. It's, it's on. 2.98 in 75 overs and two balls. Still a relatively tall order with two men already back in the hunch, but no, no. We'll keep a light shining. That was his task made uh, trickier by the dismissals of Harry Kane and Leah's deploying successive deliveries from Grant Stewart who's bowling now in two way Madsen goes back into the crease and forces it out square on the offside and there is a no run Madsen 8 off 7 these two have already added 16 in just 11 deliveries the Goldman on 20. These are the non strikers, and Madison waits for Grant Stewart to go in and get a ball. A full delivery does well to keep that one out. Punches it up to Podmore at mid on. Nicely bowled, trying to get it underneath the bat. Update coming up for BBC Radio Derby listeners fairly shortly. Well, set a nominal 341 to win this game, Sally, after Kent declared on 211 for two. They've already lost two wickets. Harry came and Leas deploy in successive deliveries to Grant Stewart. Came caught by the wicketkeeper for 11. Deploy trapped leg before first ball that he faced. Wayne Madsen is out there now with Billy Godelman. He's on eight. Godelman has 20. And Derbyshire are 43 for two now, needing a further 298. Which they almost certainly won't get, as that one is left alone to go through to the keeper. 298 runs in 75 overs. I'm going to have to get the calculator out again, because there's no way in the world I can work that out myself. Uh, the required run rate. Well, it's below 4 now. It's 3.8, so they're actually going along. Well, I can tell you that they're going along at 4.3, so they're very much up with the run rate. It's just the two wickets they've lost so far, but these are the two most experienced batsmen in the Derbyshire squad together now. Billy Godman and Wayne Madsen haven't had the kind of seasons that they have had in previous years. I think that is fair to say. And overall, Billy Godman with just uh, one century and a couple of half centuries. Wayne Madsen, four half centuries, and that's it. And it's... Uh, Unlike either of them, um, certainly Wayne Madsen has got a century in every season I've been watching them since 2016. In fact, that season, I think he got six. He's got five since then. So, uh, If Derbyshire are going to win, they, are, they need one of these two to get 100, if not both. I think both. Yeah, yeah. I think both. Yeah, as uh, the new over begins from Nathan Gilchrist, the ball is driven straight into the stumps by Billy Gold. When I say driven... I don't mean that classical drive shot. What I mean is he's reaching for it a long way outside the off stump and basically flat batting it back to the other end of the pitch and removing the bales. 
They did reach a long way for that. He's got his hands up quite low down on the handle as well, Billy Godelman. A stance that's becoming more open with time. And uh, turns this next delivery from Gilchrist into the leg side. Jan Singh has a shot at the stumps. If that hits, Wayne Mountain's in trouble, but it doesn't. And they pick up another sharply taken single. They're both wearing the sleeveless sweaters. I don't think it'll be long before one or other removes them. Perhaps Godelman will keep his on as he often bats, nearly always bats in a, a sleeveless sweater. He did against Leicestershire. He took it off against Leicestershire, but it was 137 degrees out there, so I'm not surprised. Just slightly warmer in here than it was out there, I think, in the last match. God, it was too hot. 44 for two. The score moves on to... 21. Three slips and a point now for Gilchrist, who bowls to Madsen. And he guides it to that point. Daniel Bell Drummond. And there is no run. Traditional burgers for lunch on the final day. That's what the players get as well. Delightful. Yeah, lamb burgers they were last, last week. Wow. Mm -hmm. All the trimmings. Watch out for the little sauce packet. Packets now. If, you, if you're using one of them, make sure you squidge it about because I think it's settled a bit. You, you open it up and it, just liquid pours out as this next delivery is guided into the outside by Wayne Madsen, picked up by Bell Drummond, but he decides against shying at the stumps on this occasion as they get through for a single. 46 for two. Somebody had suggested to you that it could be chicken burgers, to which yes. you almost cried. Well, we've had chicken twice in three days and it's not my favourite. I've got to say, the beef was nice on day two. It was, yeah. We had some gammon in the last match, which was absolutely oh, glorious. Love the gammon. Yeah. The gammon carvery at Canterbury is, is my favourite. Yeah, I like a bit of gammon. That's it, good Chris Bowles. He strikes the pad of Godleman. There's a big appeal, but... Bat, I think. Bat onto the pad. Umpire Cook says no. Your hearing's much better than mine. Years of listening to heavy metal has uh, <laughs> dulled my... Sense of hearing. I felt like I saw it rather than oh, okay. actually heard it. Well, your eyes are definitely better than mine. <laughs> I, did, I don't, didn't necessarily hear the noise. He didn't budge, though, did he, umpire Cook? No, no. It wasn't for raising the finger. As Godwin taps his bat on the ground and goes back into his crease, pushes the next delivery from Gilchrist out to point. And there's no run. It's the end of the over. 45 for two Derbyshire after 11. 74 more overs left as a minimum. But I'd be surprised if we got more than 74. Uh, Goldman has 21. Madsen has nine. How do you like to listen to your rock music, Fletch? Because you can't exactly do the traditional kind of head-banging sort of style, flicking your hair around. No, I used to do that. Yeah, yeah back I used in the to day. That. I'll show you a picture of me later on. It'll amuse you. Did you have the long hair? I did. Excellent. Well, longish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, as long as, you could, as long as I could get away with. Mm -hmm. I think it's still part of... Uh, For context, Fletcher has more hair on his chin these days. <laughs> very much so. Yeah, very much so. That's Grant Stewart, who does have a nice crop of dark hair and bowling to Wayne Madsen, driven up towards mid-on. Wondering if perhaps that he's trying to audition for Adam Milne's spot in the Kent T20 team that is available for finals day. Seems to. Well, yeah, well, we're, we're talking all about how Darren Stevens is going to have to play, but Grant Stewart's kind of saying, well, I'm a more like for light replacement if you uh, think about it. It would make sense, wouldn't it? In one way. Three slips in a gully. Oh, Madsen drives, and that is an expansive cover. Shot over cover. Love that. He's absolutely dispatched it away to the boundary. Just almost looked like he was leaning back. As if to deliberately swat the ball away. I can't find that picture. Um, that was a glorious shot by Wayne Madsen. Really, really good shot. I just, I just like to listen to the music now, though. I don't, I'm, my days of jumping up and down and getting excited are over, really. Stewart in full delivery, which is pushed away out towards Sam Billings, scampering. 
extra cover. I've missed my replay. I was trying to watch that shot again. There we go, man. Just rewind it. Well, it was very wide, in fairness. A lot of width to just throw your hands at. So fair enough in that sense that he went deliberately. All right. There you really go. through cover. Oh, splendid. Thank okay. you. That's longer than I've ever had it, in fairness. As this one's hit on the back pad. Chance for LBW. Looked a touch high for me. Umpire agrees. Mm. Everyone was keen. The Kemp Fielders. Certainly were. Well, they know if they can get one of these two, no matter how what their form has been like over the course of the season, they have it. They have the capability of scoring big, both of these two players. Both with best scores in first class cricket in excess of 200, of course. Just trying to see the replay and where the actual close. contact was. I think mm. it definitely was close. close yeah, worth a shout. Definitely was close. Stuart in again, bowling. Hudson defends this one. Imagine about their high scores in first class cricket are remarkably similar. 231 not out for Wayne Manson, 227. It's pretty high, for actually. Billy Gold yes, and he's yeah, and he's off the ground as well, isn't he? Yeah. If you look at his feet, so yeah, I suppose enough doubt in the umpire's mind to su suggest it was going to go over the top. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Initial instinct was it was going over the top, and umpire well, that's the, the same. Um, the umpire course coming out there for you. Yeah, you Excellent see, work. Excellent my level work. one umpire yeah. in. Off the back foot, pushed away back towards the bowler. 49 for two at the end of the over. Madsen 13, Gordonman 21. Derbyshire need 292 to win the game. Kevin Kent needs seven wickets. Well, I think we're going into the afternoon session, which is good. Uh, just uh, 18 minutes until lunch. Derbyshire need these two to be together. When they reach that interval, I would suggest having lost to Harry Kamen, Lee is deploying successive deliveries off the bowling of Grant Stewart, who's bowling really, really nicely. Two for 27 from six overs, a little more expensive than he was uh, in the first innings. As Gilchrist begins a new over from the city end, and Godwin rather hurriedly chops down on that one, and Bell Drummond goes around from point to cover to do the fielding. No worries about the over eight, that minus next to the floor, the four, but with the sort of, looks like a one under the z, the O for over, suggested it's plus. Because they haven't got a plus. I can't wait for the new scoreboard to arrive. It'd be much easier when things actually say what they are. Gilchrist in, balls edged and dropped. Down to the left. Only Robinson, sharp chance, quick delivery. I don't quite know what uh, what all the fuss is about from the Derbyshire supporters down no, below. No, that's a bit strange. It's almost as if uh, something's happened, but nothing has happened in this game. I'm so no catch has actually been claimed that wasn't a catch. No, no, no. That, that, that's just ruffians down there being noisy. They're the ones who shouted at Billy Goldman to get on with it in the last game, and he gave them a look. In comes Gilchrist again, and that one's turned into the leg side. By God, it all seems a little unnecessary to Very me. Very unnecessary. Yeah. I, I, I must admit, I, I can't remember the last time I saw Raleigh Robinson drop a catch, to be honest. He's normally an extremely safe pair of hands and very reliable gloveman and should have taken it. I think Nathan Gilchrist kind of was pretty stunned that he hadn't got that well, it was and it wasn't pouched. A complete silence out there, yeah. wasn't there, amongst the... Because uh, they knew it was a nick. It was a clear nick. As Christie's in again, and Godelman pushes this one up to mid off, and there's no run. Derbyshire on 49 for two when the drop of uh, Gilchrist happened. Well, as they are now, in fact. But yeah, all a little unnecessary from the little pocket of Derbyshire fans down to our right hand side 
Here comes Gilchrist again, and that one is chopped away and chopped away past Jack Leaning, who I would have fully expected to have caught the <laughs> ball, but uh, it raced past him down to third man for four runs. Uh, the half century is up for Derbyshire, 53 for two, Godelman up to 25. Not even Jack Leaning could react fast enough no. to catch that. Yeah, in the last match against Leicestershire, they were in danger of bowling more than 96 overs in a day, and Leicestershire were batting, and they were only three down day yeah. one having been put into bat, I think. Anyway, either way, it doesn't matter. Um, but they're only three down, and, and they slowed it down, Derbyshire, as you would expect them to. And one of the people from just down to our right-hand side shouted, get on with it. Well, the look that Billy Goldman <laughs> gave I'm them. glad he did get Yeah, back. this next delivery is pushed up to mid off to go through for a quick single. There isn't a shy at the stumps. In fact, the ball has been kicked away by the field. Is that Harry Popham? It's Logan. It's Logan, I beg his pardon. Kicked the ball away as he tried to pick it up. Uh, and in the end, they, they settled for a single. Uh, 50, sort of like a football crowd. I'm not a big fan of that, really. 26 to Godwin, 54 for two now. They're the same ones who chant good, good night, John Brown, at the end of the day. Uh, I, I don't know what they're all about, really. It's a very small pocket. It, it is very small, so you'd know who it was, wouldn't you? You'd almost be able to turn around and... Yeah... Anyway, there we go. It's a smaller pocket than I'd imagined, in fact. I thought there were, there's usually one or two more there. I won't embarrass them by naming them. No. Even though I know them. Like I say there, I'm quite surprised that Ollie Robinson didn't hold on there. Sometimes it does happen that you, as you as you dive in full length, you might land on your elbows and it kind of knocks the ball out of your hands and I feel like that's what happened. But quite rare for there to be a, a wicket keeping error of that fashion on Ollie Robinson's copybook. There's Paul Moore switching in, so he's going to have a go from the race course end of the ground. Goldman defends into the onside, and they come through for a, quite a sharp single, actually. The two batsmen 55 for 2, 27. Goldman. Unless they've. Yeah, there we go. I thought they beat me to it again, the scoreboard. Like you're saying, Fletch on day one, it's it's a bit too paced, the scoreboard. Oh, yeah, very you much so. You can't quite get to grips with it. No, no, just when you think you've, you've got there, what well, keeps a little low on you. Yeah. <laughs> and you're off. <laughs> yeah, and that's you, that's rooms. you gone. Yeah. <laughs> Three slips for Podmore. Point cover, mid on, mid off, mid wicket, and long leg. He's driven back. Oh, he's tapped that onto the stumps. I think Godelman was in, though. As he fell, having been driven back down the ground, he managed to get a hand on it to deflect the ball onto the timbers. But Godelman had barely left his crease, in truth. Mm. Nick's been on there. Only four players, he says, averaging over 30 with the bat with the red ball this season. Says it all about this team. Well, absolutely. We've been saying it from, uh, from that Worcestershire game onwards that we don't like to talk about. He goes on. He doesn't go on, but he goes on. Put more in. Nice forward defensive stroke, Madsen. Dot ball. With a stat that, that I, I, I can, I, I'm taking it on face value, and I assume it's true. You'll have, you'll have checked this out, Nick, I'm sure. But Deploy has had seven ducks this season, the most in the county championship, more than every number 11 on the circuit. That's nowhere near good enough. Uh, collectively, there's much hard work to do in the winter. Well, the first thing that needs to be done is the appointment of the new coach, of course, and then we can work out which direction the club and the team is going in. Harry Podmore bowling. Wayne Madsen pushing it back to him with a bit of a drive. I've got a shameless plug to read out. Oh, excellent. Because... Kent Cricket is supporting the BBC's Kit Out the Nation initiative. Oh, excellent. Yeah, good. Yeah, Burton Albion. I don't know whether Derbyshire were approached. They'll be helping provide sports equipment to children and young people who need it in order to get more active. Oh, yes, I am reading out the piece on the website right now. If you have good condition sports kit that you don't need, and I think this is worth noting, good condition sports kit, because I've got a lot of junk in my parents' garage. Full delivery. Shout for LBW. Paul Moore with a big roar of celebration as Wayne Madsen tried to clip it leg side. The ball cannoning into his pad and the finger going up from the umpire. Kent have their third wicket. The key one of Madsen for 13. 55 for three, Derbyshire. 
across the line of that one, Wayne Madsen trying to flick it away, and uh, he's gone, and Wayne Madsen's troubled season continues with just one more game to go. Thanks, Ed. Uh, Derbyshire County Cricket Club are on board with Kit Out the Nation, but now I'll be now the Derby County trustees as well. I'm fairly sure Derby County will be uh, too. Thanks, Ed. Uh, but yeah, well, it's, that's been Wayne Madsen's season. Didn't play any white ball. Played one game of white ball cricket, but was injured in it. And has only been back for the last couple of matches. And uh, he departs for 13, which uh, pretty much means I was just going to check out his average for the season because it's a, a reasonable sample. This is the 10th match in which he's played. 18 innings and an average for Wayne Manson of uh, 29, but I'm not sure whether the wicket, today's wicket, has been included in that. So uh, I think he probably will have done by now. But it did. It, 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 goes to show the uh, point that Nick was making about the batsman who just can't average above 30. Billy Goldman's averaging 34 at the moment. And Harvey Hussain is 41 but hasn't played in recent times. In fact, only played eight matches. And the man striding out to the middle is the man who is top of the averages. Matt Critchley, 42, he's averaging 887 runs. So 130, I think it's Wayne. I think it's Matt Critchley, it is. Uh, 113 away from a thousand runs in the championship, which uh, in a team that has struggled, my word, it struggled. That would be an incredible achievement for Matt Critchley. 55 for three, uh, only 286 left to win. So just to finish that before the next ball is bowled. Sorry, yes. Um, no, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting the, the cricket, actually. <laughs> Bob Moore's wicket wasn't necessarily timed well for my plug. But, yeah, if you have good condition sports kit that you don't need, that you want to donate to the BBC's Kit Out the Nation initiative, you can drop it off at the Kent Cricket Club shop weekdays between 11 and 2. Excellent. As Paul Moore is in and bowling. This is driven nicely by Matt Critchley out towards extra cover. Sam Billings doing the fielding. And like I say, I need to delve through the parents' garage. Get the good stuff. To see if there is anything good enough to be donated. That has needs a couple of cobwebs dusting off it. From, there is a lot of sports gear from over the years in my parents' garage that definitely needs a bit of a sorting out. So I promise Mum I'll be around at some point. To, <laughs> <laughs> well, having left it for about... 15 years. I know it'll come as a surprise to many who know me, but my days of wearing sports gear are, are quite a long way behind me. Um, and my lad has started to wear some of my old uh, Tranmere tops and Halifax Town tops. Your it's very much rugby in fashion. League tops. Uh, yeah. Old retro yeah. football yeah. tops and there are and some, There's some really good stuff that I'm, that I'm loath to give away, really. As Gil Chris begins a new over to Godwin, who's caught at square leg by Jazz Singh. What kind of shot was that from Billy Godelman? And no sooner has Wayne Madsen gone, Godelman goes as well. Derbyshire, well, they're crumbling here. 55 for four. Singh takes the catch. Gil Chris with the wicket. That's not great. That's not great. For Ollie Robinson, it is light relief having dropped Godderman on 21. He's gone for the pull stroke from a delivery that Gilchrist has dug into the pitch. And for much of this game, we've seen the short stuff get absolutely walloped for the, to the boundary for four. But Godderman almost didn't play a full-blooded pull stroke. It was kind of just a swivel. He's just hit the ball on the swivel and made no effort to, to hit it down or was cramped for room and therefore not able to hit it down and didn't get enough power on it to get it over a fielder and Jazz Singh making a, a fairly easy catch at square leg so Gilchrist does get his wicket and well we said that if Derbyshire were going to win the game or well, it was probably going to need hundreds from Madsen and Godderman and well they've they've both departed now and it's, it's very much looking like well can we five more wickets to win the game and going to have plenty of time to uh, do it this will be over this will be over mid-afternoon now Let, let's talk about something slightly worthier than Derbyshire at the moment kid out in the nation drop off points in our area Derby County Community Trust Burton Albion Community Trust the Meadowside Leisure Centre in Burton uh, Shobnall Leisure Complex in Burton, Toxeter Leisure Centre, William Gregg's Leisure Centre in Hena, the Ripley Leisure Centre and Alfreton 
leisure centre, so if you have any of that kit... That, That's a uh, splendid list. Uh, well, Ben, uh, Ben, uh, Ed Dawes has sent it to me, which is very decent of him. Uh, I've just got, I've got a message as well. Can we... Uh, yeah. I might do my update a little early, if that's okay. So I'll, I'll just leave you to try to describe the absolute, absolutely pitiful effort from Derbyshire so far this morning. Well, that's all shaping up to be a, a comfortable victory for Kent at the moment, isn't it? I know Canterbury Rugby Club are also involved, along with Kent Cricket, with uh, kids out of the nation in the county. I'll get any others to you, if I remember them. Gilchrist bowls. Oh, Wood just about manages to jam the bat on this, going backwards to that delivery. Could have so easily chopped it on. You can hear the oohs and the ahs from the Kent fielders. Of course, they're going to be a little bit like that because they're so upbeat and it's advantaged them in the game. But it did feel like it was pretty close to sneaking through the guard. I was saying to some of the other gents in the press box as Gilchrist bowls and it's pushed away off the back foot by Wood that having taken three wickets in the first innings albeit thanks to a couple of absolute ripper catches from Jack Leaning that Nathan Wood Gilchrist was one to be wary of in the second innings because well he didn't bowl that well particularly first time around and still walked away with three for Three for 64. Went at seven and a half and over in the first innings, Gilchrist. Seeing him bowling as this one's pushed away out towards mid on. And having taken five wickets and three in the win over Worcestershire last week, and there might have been a no ball actually. I was basically suggesting that watch out if Nathan Gilchrist does hit his rhythm and does bowl well. And he's proving to be a very fine signing actually for Kent from Somerset. Breakout summer for him. As he's in, bowling back of length and Wood driving nicely off the back foot. Sam Billings, that was a slightly interesting technique to try and pick the ball up in fairness. Almost wanted to collect it like a, a baton in a 4x100 metre relay. With his hand pointing down and trying to the, grab the ball in a sweeping motion. Sorry, I'm trying to. I'm sort of demonstrating it to myself in the commentary box to try and describe it. <laughs> and Vlech is just looking at me like, "What the hell's going on here?" Full delivery, driven back down the ground. Gilchrist gets half a hand on it, but Wood will come through for a single. So he's got three, sixty for four. Brings Critchley onto strike. Fletcher's interview with Matt Critchley yesterday he was talking about the possibility of the fact that on, you know, day three gets wiped out maybe if Kent declare then all three results become possible but Kent batted on and kind of meant that Derbyshire were never ever going to have a chance of getting 340 this one's pushed away out towards wide cover for a single albeit that they were up with the run rate for a time being but now at 61 for four Certainly, the 280 runs required feel like they're irrelevant. And it's more about five more wickets that Kent require. Fletcher's done his update, which means I must have one soon. A couple of minutes. Yeah, to well, they have like a, a lunch with, uh, sort of just after 12, and it goes past 12:30. So they play a tune and then come to me. So it's all it's all a bit dependent on. How uh, that's going. Harry Podmore from the race course then bowls to Matt Critchley. Pushes it out into the offside. There's no run. I was suggesting Sam Billings was trying to field that like he was taking the bat on in a relay race. Oh, OK. Hence the, the weird hand action I, I did was wonder doing. what you were doing. Yeah. yeah. With the hand behind your back. Mm. Feigning an arrest. Billings is just directing Jazz Singh. Oh, Jess wants me now. Dear, oh dear. In demand, he comes pop more balls to Critchley, who drives very pleasantly out towards long off. He'll get a couple of runs here. Pop more tried to stop it, couldn't do so. And uh, I can smell lunch. Uh, two added to the total, 63 for four. Critchley moves on to three, joins Tom Wood on three indeed. 
And at 278, now the target. It is very, very much the notional target. Kirk's been in touch as well. Listen, we'll, we'll probably have to wait until after lunch uh, to get through to everybody. I have learned that Julia Cumming is the female singer on uh, the Manic Street Preacher's new song, which uh, is very good. It's not as good as early Manic Street Preacher's, but it's, it's decent enough. She's got a good voice. With James Dean Bradfield. As Pop Mort and what will be the final over of the day. Of the day, I wish it was. This one's turned into the leg side. There's a, a cry of no from Critchley as it's stopped there by a tumbling Nathan Gilchrist at mid wicket. Final over of the morning session. Three deliveries left until lunch. Let's have a look at these these two messages then. He does mention 10 being it, Ed. I heard that last night. You're absolutely right. <laughs> it's Bob Moore. In again and Bowles. They're from South Wales, of course, the Manic Street Preachers, rather than Mid Wales. But that one is pushed very pleasantly by uh, Matt Critchley up towards uh, Long Off for a couple of runs. Critchley moves on to 5, 65. For four, Critchley's got five from six deliveries. Wood, three from five. Does he mention bingo in it as well? Emergency services in the background. Kirk Jones, Nick Hartson, we'll get to you after lunch on the tweets, I promise. If I don't, send me the tweets again in case I forget. Uh, Sam Billings has gone into a very straight, shortish mid-off in Matt Critchley's eye line. So Critchley turns it into the leg side this time. There'll be two more here. It's being chased down by uh, Grant Stewart. He gets there now, loses his cap. Two more to the total. Three twos in this over. 67. Four, four, one delivery to go until lunchtime. Three slips. The man down at um, deep backward square leg has moved squarer. Pop more. Will he bowl a short delivery? No. It's just pushed out into the offside. And at lunch, Derbyshire are 67 for four. They need a further... 274 to win. More likely, Kent need no, uh, five more wickets with Sam Connor, Connors not coming out to bat. Matt Critchley, well, he's unbeaten on seven. Wood has three. The men out this morning, Harry Kame for 11. Lears deploy next delivery for Nort. Wayne Madsen for 13. And Billy Godelman for 27. 67 for four. Kent. Go to lunch. Firm favourites to pick up their third victory in Division 3 and leave Derbyshire winless going into the last round of matches down at Sussex next weekend. Myself, Dan Fletcher and Ben Watts will be back with you for the afternoon session in around about 45, 50 minutes time.
promises uh, before tea that I would read out a couple of things so, uh, before tea, before lunch. That's not bad, do we, really? Incoming off the long run. This one keeps a bit low from Nathan Gilchrist, through to the keeper. It was left alone outside the off stump. Nick, Nick asks, uh, regarding the new coach for Derbyshire, are there any rumours about who's in the running or is it a poison chalice? No real rumours, only, well, there are rumours, but, uh, you know, nothing, nothing that I could stand up in a court of law. Um, Kirk says... In a bowling, once again, Grant, or Nathan Gilchrist rather, pushed away out towards point. This is interesting to hear the statistics uh, uh, concerning Davish's batting averages. There's only Critchley's that's acceptable. Couple that with his bowling. I just can't see him wanting to stay with us next. Well, he's, he's going, Kirk. He's going, mate. He says not, maybe. No. No, he's going to Glamorgan. Uh, that's what we're hearing. Make a great addition to their team in all forms. Well, that's the last thing we want, isn't it? The strength of knots. Full ball and driven away by Tom Wood. He's going to get a run for this because Billings has misfielded it. I mean, it would make a change for someone else other than Notts. Yeah, pitch. exactly. Nobody wants Lester him to go to Notts. I, I don't mind players. him. I don't mind him leaving as long as he doesn't go to Notts. That would just be like a kick in the watts. It's one for me. Yeah, anyway. somewhat. Mm. We've had enough of those this season. And enough players over the years get pinched by Notts. Yeah. yeah. Whether that's Derbyshire or Leicestershire. Gilchrist with three slips and the gully bowls. Critchley lets it go. Through to Robinson. Because were you saying to me that there was an article about players moving to counties relating to the 100 team that they played for? Written by the late George DeBell, who isn't late at all. He's just left ESPN. He wrote it, and it was basically saying that Phil Salt would go to Lancashire, which he did and that Chris Jordan would go to Surrey, which he did, and that Matt Critchley would go to Glamorgan, which he hasn't yet. So that's the expectation. Yeah, and they, they, they were the three players named. And George is very well connected to it. I see Jas Singh for the first time. Surprisingly, I think, given that uh, Grant Stewart will have had uh, a nice lunchtime rest. I didn't bowl immediately before the lunch interval either, but... I'm going to give Jazz Singh a go. He's bowling two. Tom Wood with three slips in place, and Wood goes back into his crease. Pushes it back towards the bowl, and there's no run. I, I don't expect Derbyshire to win this game. I don't necessarily expect them to draw this game, but I would like to see some fight. And I'm sure there's plenty of supporters out there like me. I'm not a supporter, you know that but plenty of people out there like me who just want to see them put some fight up. Sing balls way wide of the offside. It's signalled a wide. Blimey, we've seen how many wides have we seen today? Three, four? That's signalled wide. We'll prolong the agony. We've had a few no balls and wides in the whole game, actually. Yeah, they have been, haven't they? More well, score moves up to seven. Uh, no, it doesn't. 69 for four. Just a mere 272 more runs to win. This next delivery is a better one, short of a length, and guided very nicely by Tom Wood down to backward point. 4-4 four, four runs. Nice shot by Tom Wood. Got up on his toes, got the ball down pretty quickly. Bell Drummond didn't stand a chance of stopping it, nor could he prevent it from crossing the boundary rope. And uh, Wood moves on to 8-73. For four. Sing it again, and would this time uh, catch one that looks like it might have kept low, but probably didn't. And he just jabs his bat down on it and turns it into the leg side for a single. He'll move on to nine, 74 for four. Effectively five with Sam Connors, of course. We're being told he won't bat. Although, you can imagine getting to the last over of the day. Connor's on the ground somewhere. Get him strapped up. Yeah. Get the draw. I don't know whether that's a possibility or not. Oh, it's just things in again, and this time Critchley pushes him. Up towards Harry Podmore at mid on. I mean, he batted pretty well on one leg last time. Huh? Didn't he just? Yeah. He had one 
gear, really. Almost one shot, carving the ball into the leg side. Top scorer in the first innings. The number nine bats when he normally bats 11. Critchley waits and guides this next delivery by seeing out into the offside. And there's no run. Seen a tweet from Surrey saying, if you like a forward defensive shot, our live stream is the place to be. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to see a few here, really. That's a good way to promote your content for the day. I really would like to see a few here. Not sure that we're going to see many. Next delivery is clipped into the leg side by Matt Critchley for a single. He'll pinch the strike and move Derbyshire up to 75 for four. He moves on to eight. Tom Wood has nine, 265 to win. Five more wickets for Kent. Trying to work out Scotland we're going to play Zimbabwe in a game that kicked off in uh, 44 minutes, but it's a T20. I don't think they had a floodlit ground. Look, it's a remarkable game at the Oval, isn't it? 153 for eight in reply to Essex's 439. That game's going nowhere. Kill Chris first, ball of the over then to Critchley is defended back down the pitch. Leicester should now lead by 22 against Sussex in the drawn game at Grace Road. The 381 for four and applied to 359. That's a game that could have done without losing a day. <laughs> Three slips for the Zimbabwe warm bowler. As this one beats the outside edge of Critchley's bat. Pushing at it. 75 for four, Critchley eight, nine for Wood. Goes for a bit of a prod down at the pitch. Not far away here, lads, is the shout from the Kent fielders. Feels like pretty decent analysis, that. Yes. From the city end of the ground once more. Powerful action and good pace. That delivery playing and missing once again, Critchley. Could well be his last knock in a Derbyshire shirt on this ground. Not far away. They never are. In a bowling once again, left alone by Critchley. I'm trying to work out who it is who's, who we can hear chirping away. Whoever it is, he's very loud. Is it Podmore down a fine leg? Is he feeling a bit lonely? That's normally the way things are. No, it just sings at fine legs. Maybe it's sort of pushed away out towards cover. Podmore's up mid on. Three of them have got their backs to us. We've got four, including Bell Drummond, which doesn't help. The three slips and the wicket keeper. So it's starting to warm up now, isn't it? Perhaps it's because I've eaten a burger, but. Here he comes. That was nice, that burger at lunch. Mm. Oh, hello. That's a lovely shot. On drive from Critchley. Down towards the rope. He's going to get a couple for it. But very crisply timed. He moves to 10, 77 for four. Of the over. Just single. Take off his cap and come and have another go. And Bexley Seema. Club side winning the Kent Premier League the other weekend. A rare opportunity, just the second one for him in a Kent shirt, but he's got the name on the back. Scored number 19. Ball into Tom Wood. Leaves on that looked a good lead from here. It goes through to Ollie Robinson, who dives away to his left hand side, which shows you that it was uh, swinging back down the leg side after it went past the stumps. 
Now there is a person with a dog over on the far side. I'm refusing to uh, suggest whether it's male or female. Having made that mistake once in this match. This thing is in and that one is uh, kept out by Wood. Ball pushed up towards Harry Podmore at mid on. He slips. Point cover, mid on, mid off, mid wicket. Uh, long leg, very much as you'd expect. Nothing out of the ordinary from Kent at this stage. They're going along nicely with four wickets already in the bag, and this one is pulled, but not. Well, it wasn't pulled in the end because it hit him in the body. He tried to pull it, Tom Wood. Just for a moment, Grant Stewart was interested at mid wicket. But only a moment. He'll have realised pretty quickly that Tom Wood had made no connection whatsoever with that delivery. Wood waits. And this time he tries to flick it down the leg side and fails to connect. The ball goes through to the keeper. Must be somebody going out to bat at Middlesex, who's very exciting. I'm trying to work out how it is. Ed Barnard. This next delivery from Singh is pushed out into the offside. They'll go through for a comfortable single here. And the score will move on to 78 for four. Possibly. Yeah. Wood moves to join Matt Critchley on 10. I've got a, a, a book, a book, no, I'm not, I've got a bag of books that was brought to me by Nigel, which I shall look through this week as his next delivery, the final delivery of the over from Jazz Singh is pushed by Matt Critchley up to mid on where it's fielded by Harry Podmore. End of the over, 65 to go in the day, 68 for, uh, 68, 78 for four, which means that Derbyshire nominally require a further 263 in those. 65 overs. The current run rate's only just a touch under four, in fairness. But they are four down, and Kent only need five more wickets because Sam Connors won't bat. So I'm looking forward to looking through that bag of books. Love a book. Don't read them. <laughs> Nathan Gilchrist Bowles pushed out towards wide mid off. Dot ball. What do you do with your books when you're not reading them? Put them on a shelf. They look nice. Yeah, they, they do. do actually. They look nice on the yeah, shelf. Yeah, I, I do books. agree. Actually, it's the best place for them. I always think. On the shelf. Yeah, on the shelf. With me. I said, no, it's a, it's a number of yearbooks which I shall read through. Chris Bowling pushed away out towards cover where Logan does the fielding. Get in touch with us, kinkcricket at gmail.com, fletchcricket at gmail.com. <laughs> if you've got any more book recommendations for Fletch. Well, they've got to be free, really, now. No, they haven't got to be free well, at Ideally, all. they look nice. Yeah. Well, but he doesn't, he's not too worried about the content. If they've got a jazzy cover. <laughs> I've got some terrific old cricket books. Gilchrist, once again, right arm seam, bowling to the right-handed batsman, Wood, pushing it back defensively. Sadly, I don't have a wisdom from 1937, which is the which is the, the one that I would ideally like, but uh, probably couldn't afford. But I do have one of the one of the smaller the precursors to the Playfair, in which it has the final league table for 1936 with Derbyshire at the top, league champions. I don't think we'll be seeing that again anytime soon. If I'm honest, they've just shown the ball to the umpire for the first time, so. Uh, Change next time. Putting the seed. Seed of doubt. Yeah. In the umpire's mind that the ball is misshapen. Gilchrist bowling with it. Oh, it seems all right for bowling with, clearly, because that is a brute of a delivery. Good length. Zips past the outside edge of Wood's bat through to the keeper. Particularly like the way he set off, just at the time as that motorbike did as well, and it sounded like he was making a motorbike noise as he was coming into bowl. That he should try that perhaps later on. This make him sound, sound, that, sound a little quicker. Is that umpire Nick Cook who's just had a joke with Sam Billings to say, "Are you sure you want to swap the ball?" <laughs> <laughs> you 
It looked like it was doing something for you there. Gilchrist bowling again. Solidly in behind it would. Up towards Billings. Is that good pressure, this gill dog? Or something? I think so. I think that's exactly what it was. The old gill dog. <laughs> Here he comes, woof woof. Into the crease. Defended off the back foot. Yeah, we could have done with a wicket falling. Oh, it was a no one. ball, in fact, that ball. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure the no, I think you might be right. Stuck an arm out. Oh, that would have been nice for the, uh, the highlights package. Yeah, really. Did he comes woof woof? <laughs> <laughs> Did he able to clip out? <laughs> then he wouldn't have had the context either. Oh. This one's just ended into the mid-off area. Yeah, the little brief social media clip would have gone down a storm. Yeah. Or I'd have looked very silly. Into the no. over. 80 for four, Derbyshire. 10 each for Critchley and Wood. 261 more to win. Oh. Five wickets. That would have been a maiden if not bowled a no ball. But a good one as well. Go past the bat. Try to change the ball. All sorts kicking off. Billings has just taken Jao Singh's cap off him and shoved it down the back of his trousers. Don't put that back on my head. Is Jao Singh? Oh, he's beating him. Is it? Is he hit? He's hit the pad. I thought he'd hit the edge of the bat and gone away, but I think it's going to be leg buys. It is going to be leg buys. Uh, it's going to be signalled now as a leg by. Must have hit him outside the line. Yeah, well, oh, I think it was high as well. Mm. Apart from that, though. Apart from that, you Good know, shout, legitimate LBW shout, yeah. <laughs> They're all legitimate. Uh, oh, I've got my request to come after this next song. I'll see if I can work out what it is. No idea. Next delivery from Jazz Singh turned into the leg side. You requested he was, sorry. I had to do my report, uh -huh. my update after this next song, but I think I can't tell from the song. I don't know what the song is, so I can't, couldn't tell you how far into the song we are. It's a sort of modernish sounding song. Goodness knows what it is. It's <laughs> terrible. Sing bowls, and that one is cut away by Tom Wood, but into the ground and straight to Bell Drummond at backward point. I really can't help you, not on the basis that I might not know. It's yeah, no, you well, like, I, I, there's no way I can. I'll, it stopped. Oh no, it started again. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I'm on pins there. Sing is in again, and Wood leaves alone outside the off stump, allows it to go through to the keeper. And there is no run. I've been using the word pitiful this morning. I've got to try and find other words I can use. So, you know my uh, Twitter feed. That Fletch Sport. <laughs> Playfair, not Mayfair, as this next delivery is from Sink is turning to the leg side. <laughs> There's no run. I'm not missing many Playfairs. Thank you, Ian. How very dare you. <laughs> well, we're down to relying on the middle order and the lower order again. And the top order has failed once more. 11 of 21 completed innings, sub 200 as this next delivery is played off the back foot by Wood out into the offside. Filled by Billings who hairs off. I think they're going to have a little impromptu drinks and hand sanitisation break. That's exactly what they're going to do in the background. So uh, you won't be missing any cricket should I do an update. But I can't tell when this song is going to finish because it keeps stopping and then it keeps then it starts again. It must be a modern thing. I've no idea who it is. I'll try and relay to you who it is and then you can make your own minds up and listen to it perhaps. Ian will tell us who it is, Ian Sky. Probably.
Gil Chris begins a new over from the city and turn into the leg side by by Matt Critchler no I still don't know cake by the ocean what is that all about no idea update about to happen this next delivery is pushed out into the off side Critchley drives, doesn't time it though. So when you when when you said Claire after this song, what you meant was not after this song. Next delivery from Gilchrist is driven. Gilchrist is defended by Matt Critchley. Since lunch, Derby should have scored 14 runs. Gilchrist turns. He's bowling from the city end. He's got three slips in place and he's on his way in now. Bowls and Again, Critchley drives, but again he doesn't time it. And his 10 have come from 26 deliveries. He faced 27 deliveries in his first innings and got 27. So he's being slightly more circumspect yet to hit a boundary. Matt Critchley, Tom Wood has 10 as well as his uh, batting partner. And it's 81 for four at the end of the maiden over. Just two runs scored off the last... Uh, Two overs. This one run scored off the last two overs. Derbyshire required 260 to win. There's four, though. First delivery from the Jazz Sing over is cut away by Tom Wood down to a wide third man for four runs. He moves to 14. 85 for four. comes Singh again bowling to Tom Wood who leaves alone outside the off stump. That one kept a little bit low, went through very low in fact to Ollie Robinson, the Kent keeper. Barely got off the ground after pitching but it was wide of the off stump and safe enough in the end. Here comes Singh again. In arm bowls, and that one is defended by Tom Wood. Eighty five for four, eighteen runs scored since lunch. Twenty five minutes. Game's ground to a halt, but that's good for Derbyshire. In goes Jazz Singh and bowls to. Wood who goes for the expansive drive. Uh, Derbyshire at 85 for four, effectively five because Sam Connors won't bat with that ankle injury that he suffered batting in the first innings, um, which means they now have to survive a further 61 overs uh, to get out of this game with a draw. They still require a, a notional 256 more runs. As I said earlier, the most likely thing is that Kent will pick up the five wickets they require, but things have quietened down since lunch 
which is a good thing from a Derbyshire perspective. Matt Critchley's being very circumspect. He's on 10 from 26 deliveries. He scored 27 from 27 in the first innings, and he's been joined this afternoon by Tom Wood, who's on to 14, got a boundary off the first ball of the current Jazz Singh over that's being bowled. And Derbyshire, well, they were abject this morning, it has to be said. The batting was fairly poor, and hence they're five down, uh, four down rather, and now they're five down because Tom Wood has just been bowled by Jazz Singh. The end moves ever closer to uh, the uh, season here at the county ground. One more game to come away from home, of course. They haven't won at home this season. They're not going to win this one either. They're 85 for five. <laughs> Given it's Derbyshire batting, it's quite likely that whenever I'm talking, Derbyshire will lose a wicket, I'm afraid. I mean, in the last few matches, they've been 50-odd for five. There was 70-something for five in the first things. They're now 85 for five. The batting has been a huge problem all season. Even before injuries struck, their batting was poor. They used the, uh, the coach as, as used injuries as a reason. I won't use the word excuse, but, but that's what it is. Um, the, the, even before the injuries struck, they were very poor, and they've continued to be very poor batting, and that puts extra pressure on the bowlers, and then they start to break down as well, and it's a vicious cycle, uh, and the end of the season for them simply can't come soon enough, really. Um, they've only won four games in the last seven years in the county championship here in Derby. I know they didn't play here at all last season, but that's simply unacceptable. So uh, another wicket falls during another update. This time it's Tom Wood who perishes for 14, bowled by Jazz Singh. My presenter asked me if Kent were any closer to victory. And I said, no, no, they haven't taken any wickets as yet. And then he Bosh. came in and bowled, leg stump went for <laughs> high. Yeah, yeah. Well, my presenter asked me if it was a coincidence or just a statistical certainty every time I was on air that, that a wicket would be falling. And clearly with Derbyshire, it's, a, it's more probable than possible. Sadly, that was the end of the over. But here comes uh, Nathan Gilchrist in from the city and bowling to Matt Critchley, who turns that very nicely up towards the extra, no, the mid-wicket boundary. And there's a sliding stop there. They're going to come back for a third, though. The new batsman is Brooke Guest, incidentally, and he scampers back into his ground at the near end. Three more to Critchley. He moves on to 13. 88 4 5. I rather optimistically suggested to Ed Dawes that this game might be over by T. Well, if we get anywhere near T, I think it will be uh, something of a triumph, in all honesty. Wood 14 from six, 36 deliveries. At least he stuck around for a bit. But this is this has just been a horrible season. Oh, well, that's a good ball. That's a well. He sort of ducked his head out of the way and left his bat there, and it sort of looped into the leg side off his bat. He's got off the mark with that one. Has Brooke Guest? He's a better batsman than that, as he showed last week. That was a, a peculiar, peculiar attempt at a shot from Brooke Guest. When your top five fails week after week after week, it, it, and it puts so much pressure on your middle order and their middle order batsmen for a reason. And then, of course, the bowlers come in and bat, get a few runs, and they've got nothing to bowl at. It's just, it's just a recipe for disaster. Critchley waits. And this next delivery is uh, off the back foot, punched into the offside. There's no run. My, my, my presenter only asked me that question after he'd forgotten to come to me, of course, in the first place. So. <laughs> I mean, maybe he was trying to forget him. <laughs> yes, we're all trying to forget. Uncle Chris turns at the top of his mark. One for 22. He's in his eighth over. He bowls to Chris News. Edge this one. The second slip caught by Zach Crawley. Thank you very much. Six down now. 89 runs on the board and just three more wickets required by Kent to complete victory at the Encora County ground. That was no kind of shot either, really. No, it was a bit of a wafty drive, wasn't it? Good take by Crawley at second. Little celebration from Gilchrist, enjoying himself in this second innings, having been very expensive first time around. But it certainly does take wickets. This young man, really good acquisition for Kent. And, well, they came into this Division 3 with a, a mission to prove that they shouldn't really have been in it. 
and Kent are proving, well, so far, to have been too good for Leicestershire, Worcestershire and now Derbyshire this week. 89 for six. Well, Derbyshire are almost certainly going to go into the final round of matches at the bottom of the table as well, aren't they? Because um, the only team below them, Sussex, well, their game with Leicestershire is going to end in a draw. 411 for four, Leicestershire, in their first innings, leading by 52. Well, that game's not going to end in any kind of result one way or the other, so they'll pick up the extra eight points for the draw as well, whereas Derbyshire will leave this game with just three. And now we have together two men who came together just about seven days ago, probably eight now, with the score on, I think it was 72 for five. And they were in desperate, desperate trouble. It might have been nine days ago. Brooke Guest and Anuj Dahl. So these two batted together for a long, long time. Put on 227 for the seventh wicket. Well, they're going to have to do something similar here to secure a draw for Derbyshire. Because the only batsmen still to come are Ben Aitchison and Dustin Melton. This game could be over by two o'clock. Staggering. Absolutely staggering. People still think that this has been an OK couple of years. Unbelievable. In comes uh, Gilchrist and pushes this out into the outside. I, mean, I, I guess it in a way is about what are your expectation levels in the first place and someone who's saying that is not expecting Derbyshire to compete for trophies say but you would expect to, to win a few games and to compete a game would be nice a game in this format yeah mm. only one two in the uh, 50 that's next to Lloris that's more than Kent did Dahl the one four in the I think it was four in the T20 from memory but it might have been fewer than that but they're not Dave Houghton's anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I, can't, I, I know it's easy to sit here and be critical, but they are professional sportsmen. They're, they train. They, they, they should be better than this. At least show some fight. 69, uh, 89 for six, rather, as Jazz Singh begins a new over. No, he doesn't. It's you anyway, isn't it? Sorry, man. That's all right. No, no, I'm, I'm good. I think we've swapped ends. I'm so angry. <laughs> it's not good. Just leave, just leave Fletch to cool off <laughs> for the over. It's Jazz Singh Bowles left alone outside. The off stump. I've got a couple of, I feel like I've got a couple of emails. Oh, good. Possibly. They'll, they'll soothe my nerves. Oh, John Flynn said the song that you were listening to on BBC Derby yeah. was Cake by the Ocean. Yes, it was. It was dreadful. By DNCE. I've never heard of them. Who, have you? Who? I oh, know I have heard that song. It's really catchy and annoying. No. As Pat goes, guest. Who eats cake by the ocean? Like, no, no, no. What no. a ridiculous concept. It kept stopping and starting again and... It's ice cream or fish and chips only. Yes. Or, you know, yeah. there's a fairly limited menu for eating by the ocean, and cake is not one of those. Anyway. In and bowling. Once more, Jazz Singh nudged away into the onside. Terry getting in touch, saying, um, with all talk of comings and goings, what do you think would be good signings for Kent next season? Sounds like there will be a couple of slots opening up in the squad. Critchley would be ace. Um, I don't think he's going to go to Kent. Godlam and Wood came. Madsen and Deploy. If, you, if that was your top five. Who will be the next <laughs> Kent player to win an England debut? As Jersing Bowles left alone outside the off stump. I think it's probably more about... Well, I get, Billings has been in the test squad a couple of times without playing. So potentially he could get a go. <laughs> Crawley, the main one is Crawley trying to get back into the England Test squad. But I, I, Matt Milnes has been in the Lions along with Ollie Robinson. I probably would say Matt Milnes. As this one's driven away out towards Billings. It throws into Robinson. How is it that Adam Milnes gone to the IPL but Billings will make finals day? I I don't know the, the whys and what fours of IPL contracts, and but... Most, sounds like most of the English players are, 
or, or staying to play in it. Probably, well, I, don't know. I don't know. In Triff is jazzing for the full ball and it's driven away for four runs. Nicely played. Unless Billings can hunt it down. There we are. Ooh, he's so <laughs> quick, Billings. That is outstanding field. Yeah, it is. Nobody else feels that. It's astonishing. Anish Dahl would have done, I think. Yeah, true. But no, you're right. That is outstanding fielding because from the moment it left the bat, it was four runs. It's just three in the end for Brookest. Yeah. yeah. 92 for six. I, I, Terry, I don't actually think there are many spots available in the Kent team. And I can't really see them making many signings in the off season, mainly because Kyam obviously retired with his shoulder problem, but they've brought in James Logan. Heineken is one of the overseas players. I think there's going to be overseas slots available. You were from, uh, from Gilchrist, sorry, as uh, the keeper. I, th I think they, overseas slots are the only ones that potentially would, would come in because you know, I can't see them, say, getting Sam Northeast back. I just think probably he's too expensive and they've got enough batting already. And got a good battery of young bowlers as well. I, I don't necessarily see where they need to sign apart from overseas. Still from Gilchrist is short and gas ducks underneath it. So that's the concern for Derbyshire is that whoever the new coach is, of the 11 who started this match, the ones who haven't got contracts for next season are Tom Wood and Alan Dahl. And that's it. So he's going to have to be a damn good coach. It's Gilchrist balls, and that one is turned into the leg side by Brooke Guest. Others have contracts as well. Mikey Cohen is contracted for next season. I know for certain. I don't think uh, Matthew McKinnon is as yet. There are contracts that will end at the end of next season. Godman and Madsen, the most notable amongst those, but extensions at this stage with no coach in place will be foolhardy in the extreme as this next delivery is defended by Brooke Guest up to mid on. As I understand it, they are everything is on hold that hasn't already been mm. offered or signed. Peter Irving sent us that lovely email earlier on. Mm. Got back in touch to say, Hi chaps, I can see why the England selectors have had a look at Matt Critchley and how he might be poached. He really shows the maker's name very solidly in attack and defence, front and back foot, very textbook. Replied 10 minutes later, What do I know? Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Brookes defends this next delivery back towards Gilchrist, who parries it with his right hand. No, he's a good player. He's a good player. And I'm not sure that his head's here anymore. It didn't look like he, he He's a bubbly, chatty, non stop, out in the middle kind of personality who hasn't been the same since he returned from the 100. All the speculation about him leaving really reared its ugly head as this one is driven very nicely by Brooke Guest. They're going to get one. They might even get two here. Dan is Darley's quick. Pop Moore. Well, he sort of jogs after the ball, doesn't he, Harry Pop Moore? So they do get two very comfortably. Guest moves on to 694 for six. Because we know what the record stand for the seventh wicket is, so they're some way away from it at the moment. But at 94 for six. The chances of getting the three figures have been increased. And there are still... I've got the wrong, got the wrong bit. There are still uh, 58 overs remaining in the day's play for Kent to get just three more wickets. And you would expect them to get them at some point. But the sun's out. It, it should be fairly straightforward. <laughs> it should be fairly straightforward batting. When I agreed to do 7.50 tomorrow morning on breakfast... Uh, it's now been changed to 7.15. That's earlier. As Jazz Singh is in and left alone outside the house done by Anna's Dell. I don't mind though. I can do it from the front room. If I'm really lazy, I could probably do it from bed. I oh, know they won't be disturbed by my son at that kind of time in the morning. This thing is in, left alone by Dahl to go through to the keeper. I did my match updates earlier on in the season from my own sofa. I got pinged and had to isolate. Did you? Yeah, I just carried on doing my updates, but just from home. 
We had commentary. Adrian Harms carried on the commentary manfully with guests that stepped into the bridge because Matt and I were both oh. in a COVID jail that week. Next delivery is cut away by uh, Dal, but he didn't time it well enough to get it past the man at backward point. I've not been pinged. I then did Touch golf point. updates from home before finally getting let out for the final day of the Open. You'd have commentated off the screen last season, wouldn't you? Between January and whenever it was when we yeah. weren't allowed to go to away again. Yeah, for the football. Things in again, left alone by Dal outside the Alstom. Ball goes through to the keeper. Surprising how tricky that can be. I got the full picture necessarily from yeah. a single camera operation, which most uh, clubs at League One, even in the Championship last night, I watched the Derby game on a single camera on the red button. Things in again. Dahl goes back and pushes it just to the right of uh, Val Drummond, who chases it down from his position. That uh, Gully gets there, but they've got back for two. Dahl off the mark, 96 for six now. I found the um, generic crowd hum that we were playing underneath the commentary mm. kind of even weirder than empty stadiums, to be honest. We did something very clever. Well, I thought it was clever anyway. This one's defended by Dahl into the ground, out into the offside, under the over 96 for six, two to Dahl, six to Guest. We used the away choice on the stream, mm. which was just the noise from the ground, put it through the mixer and use that as well with commentary and, uh, and summarise it. And it worked, it worked quite yeah, well. That's a good quite, the very first game that we did, I think, was Gillingham away. In fact, when uh, when Burton won by a goal to nil in Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank's first game in charge, um, because single camera and the camera, the referee blew his whistle and started marching, and I just said, oh. "I think the manager said something naughty." Gilchrist bowls, <laughs> and this one pushed away by guest up towards mid on. Fair guess. Off he marched to Steve Evans. <laughs> <Not> quite <laughs> a word with him. The one at Wimbledon was too close, though. They had some art house uh, cameraman there who, when it was a corner or a free kick, zoomed in on the taker oh, no. and then just basically whipped the camera around to the penalty area. It was getting motion sickness. Chris Bowles, a full delivery, not far away from the outside edge of Guest's bat on that occasion. Bright sunshine now over the county ground in Derby. I left my sunglasses in the box next door, actually. Oh, no. A few of the Kent players have got them on. Bill Drummond at Gully. Logan's is still in the back of his head. As he fields at point. Might have to go chase this one. In fact, Billings will chase it, but he won't get there because Guest has played that away nicely off the back foot. Out to the cover boundary for four, nine... No, in fact, that's the 100 up. 100 for 6, with Guess moving to 10. Well, Derby should have never been bowled out for less than 100 this season, so that's, uh, that's They're not something. going to be today. No, that's something. We've only got one more game to go. It was a nice forcing stroke off the back foot, that one. There is a, a vacant gap at cover, really. Oh, that's a lovely stroke. Straight down the ground. Full delivery from Gilchrist. Bob Moore's going to chase it. So he's only actually going to get two. But full maker's name, as Peter was saying in that email a moment ago, about Critchley, but this time guessed the keeper nudging it back past Gilchrist. He has 12, 102 for six. Rattling along now. I'm just looking away to the stand in the corner of the ground that's you know, Chris Bowling and it's defended in front of the hotel. You know, we had that gentleman that was here yesterday. Yeah. There was only three spectators we saw pretty much all day. And one of them, he, he had perched himself in his spot at the yeah. back row, hadn't he? Yeah. He's not there today. Yeah, well, it's too dry. He came yesterday when it was absolutely <laughs> wazzing it down all day. <laughs> and he's not in his seat today. Maybe he's out in the sunshine. Here comes Gilchrist. Edge. Taken by Robinson. He's just about got that. A low take from the keeper. 
to remove the Derbyshire wicketkeeper. Another wicket for Gilchrist. And Guest, having hit a couple of nice shots in the over. That one off the outside edge of his bat. He's on his way. 102 the Derbyshire score. That now the seventh wicket to fall. Two more needed for Kent to win the game. Yes. A good catch. Low down. Nobody in the stand below us to our right said anything about that one. Not that they should have said anything about the previous one, but Brooke Guest, well, he can't repeat his heroics of uh, last week with Anuj Dahl. He'll now be batting with Ben Aitchison in trying to save this game. If these two can bat 56 overs, I'm sure Mr Aitchison is listening. I shall eat the hat that I was going to eat last week when I said that they wouldn't save the follow one and they didn't. But, uh, yeah, the, the end is... Very much nigh now, as they say. Derbyshire. The start of the day had to face, what, 85 overs. It wasn't at the start of the day because Kent batted on and declared at 211 for two. They could have batted till now and still had enough time to bowl Derbyshire out. You could never be 100% certain, of course, which is why they did what they did. Absolutely, and I guess in a way, you by batting on and, and putting a lead of 340 on the board, it's... You know you're not going to lose the game, don't you? Yeah, yeah and for the opposition, that. it's a bit of a, a blow to your morale, isn't it? Yeah. You, you know that you're yeah. just going out to try and bat and save a game, and there's no hope of you winning it. And it's all a bit soul-destroying, especially when you lose a couple of early wickets. I would urge Ed Dawes not to start sending me messages about the cabinet reshuffle because if I start talking about that then I will get myself into all sorts of trouble so uh, I shall just ignore that, it's interesting news that uh, you can find out about the cabinet reshuffle on the BBC website I'm sure the new over begins it's a no ball from uh, Grant Stewart who's coming just to finish things off here yeah, well done 102 for 7 <laughs> He's always, he's like in a different time zone next door. Uh, everybody spotted it was Grant Stewart, apart from the man who was supposed to be scoring and announcing. He has to wait until the first ball's been delivered. Stewart's in again to bowl to Dahl, who gets a full delivery and does well to keep that one out. Turn down towards backward square leg. It'll expose Ben Aitchison to the bowling of Stewart. Dahl moves on to three, but he can't spend the next... 56 overs protecting the man at the other end. Oh dear. <laughs> if, if I get permission to read what Ian's just sent me, that is fantastic. 104 for seven. In comes. Oh, that's a good delivery. There's a wild swing outside the off stump from. Uh, Ben Aitchison. Not looking like a man who wants to hang around for 56 overs. Almost like he's got somewhere to go. Sadly, I'm not sure that he has. 104 for seven. <laughs> oh, mine beat him rush hour on the way home. Ah, uh, I know. He's, he's uh, yeah. He can't. <laughs> it's still again. That one is pushed out into the offside. If, if we go, here we go. I'm not sure if that's permission or not. Three laughy faces. It's a terrific little... Uh, I wonder, it can't be a season ticket, though, can it? Unless they're included in season tickets, European matches. Stewart runs away from us, bowls to Aitchison, who gets an inside edge and gets off the mark down towards the long leg. 105 four seven all home games so uh, the thing that made me laugh was a message from Ian H's and Ben's dad is saying is now a good time to tell Ben I've given away his season ticket for the Liverpool game tonight on the basis that he wouldn't make it back in time and European games are included in season tickets at Liverpool here is Stuart yes I don't think it's a good time to tell him necessarily as Dahl will get a single here he bashed it straight into the ground and it bounced over the head of the bowler at the end of his follow-through 
And he picks up two runs for it, 106 for seven. I mean, one, having a Liverpool season ticket, that is a commodity in itself. Mm. And then tickets for the Champions League opener against AC Milan. First time <laughs> fans have been back in the ground. And um, Since that Atletico game when everyone got COVID. Yes. Supposedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Oh no. <laughs> Next delivery. Ooh, inside edge onto the pads of Dal under the over. How long does it take to get to Enfield from here? Well it would take it would for me to get back to Bolt's about an hour and hour and forty, something like that. You could comfortably get there in two hours. Well assuming kickoffs seven forty five or even eight o'clock. I would suggest he's probably got enough time to get there. <laughs> Nice work, though, we Nice work. Hope you got a good price for it. What's happening here? We're going to see some spin. For the first time in the game, James Logan, I think it is. Well, he's got no number on his back. Yeah, left arm spin from James Logan. He's the number 27, but he doesn't have it on his back. And he comes around the wicket and bowls to Aitchison. He pushes it out into the offside. Well, I hope you're successful, Ian. I, don't know, I didn't mean to ring Paul then. and pushes this next one out into the offside. Perhaps he's not bothered about the European Champions League. Taps his bat. Waits. There's Logan with a rather extravagant start to his run of balls. Wow! Six runs. That's been smashed over the uh, members' pavilion on the far side of the ground. The umpire's just waiting to signal, and uh, it was a no ball as well, and six runs, so eight to the total. Aitchison gets six of them, and moves on to 712, 13, 14. Yeah, Derbyshire heading towards defeat here. Wesley heading there quite quickly. In fact, they were 67 for four, chasing a further 274 to win at lunch. They've since lost Tom Wood for 14, Matt Critchley for 13, and most recently, Brooke Guest for 12. Bit of late defiance here from Ben Aitchison, who's just smashed the, smashed the left arm spinner into the members' pavilion for six. He's moved on to seven. Dahl has three, and Derbyshire are 114 for seven. It'll be 114 for seven when the scoreboard eventually ticks over as this next delivery is defended beautifully by Ben Aitchison. Nicely done, Ben. Out into the uh, offside. Aitchison waits. Next delivery. Defended again. This time back towards the bowler, Logan. The scoreboard always seems to go to pot near the end of games as well. It is 114 for 7. 116 for 7. No, 114, surely. This next delivery from Logan is defended by Aitchison. Back towards the bowler. The over's coming to an end, but you'd never know. Staggering, really. One ball left. In comes Logan again. Bowls, and Aitchison drives it back to him. He doesn't time that one, though. It's comfortably fielded. By the bowler at the end of his follow through. And uh, there is no run. Scoreboard's having a moment. Yeah, I read out 106 for seven and then was told by our friend next door that it's actually 116 for yeah. seven. I enjoyed that bop down the ground though from H. So. It was decent, wasn't it? He can hit balls a long way. Stuart balls to Dahl, pushes this out into the 
offside. Do you think Kent gave James Logan a bowl? Because felt sorry for him. Mum's come down to watch him, and mm. he's not been playing any cricket. <laughs> I was hoping it was uh, James Logan because he re he, re he re removed his sweater, and I thought, oh, thank goodness for that. And then there's nothing on his back. Oh, he no, still yeah. hasn't got a number. This is my point. Mm. How has Logan got no number? Ball strikes the pad. That's got to be close. Not out, says umpire Lungley. Well, how does Logan not have a number, but Jazz Singh's got one? Yeah, absolutely. Because he signed a, 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 con, a couple of year contract now, Logan, having originally been on a short term deal. Someone saw that man out. A number for the back of his top. Can't even say what number he is. Stewart in balls two. Darla goes back into his crease, pushes it out into the offside. Bell Drummond comes racing in to do the fielding. But it just looks like a man who wouldn't isn't particularly bothered about the Champions League to me, I've got to say. It's his sixth six of the season, and he's now Derbyshire's, I think it's his sixth. I'll double check. It is. And he's now Derbyshire's leading six hitter in the county championship. As Dahl waits and pushes this out into the offside, he's more than happy to let Ben Aitchison take some of the strike here. As I say, he can't really go through the next 53 and a half overs trying to protect the last two batsmen. That would be uh, physically and mentally exhausting, I would have thought. Every man for himself out there now, 117 for seven, and in the commentary box. <laughs> <laughs> Stewart must be a shorter run up there. And that is driven beautifully by Ben Aitchison. That'll go all the way for four runs, I fancy. I know it's oh, it's slowing up, it's slowing up. It's not going to go all the way. What is going on here? He's only going to get three for it. And it's that man again, Sam Billings, who chased it down. He got a little bit of help from the damp outfield, I think, there. Because it really did slow up. It looked like a really nice shot when it left the bat. Aitchison moves up to 10, 120. Four seven now. Probably. Who can tell anymore? Things die. Don't matter, does it? Bright. To be honest. Well, no, it doesn't. But you know, that one is off uh, a thickish inside edge down to a backward square leg, and they come back for two. There might even be another one here. No, they decided against it, probably wisely. I think Dahl would have made it. I'm, with the greatest of respect, not sure that uh, Aitchison would. So James Logan's uh, squad number is actually 27. Apparently has it printed on medium shirts, but he's grown six inches since he signed for Kent. So, um. <laughs> so he needs a Harry Kane upgrade in the shirt size. Well, Liam says he's been going to the gym, but with no, with no offence to James, I don't, I don't. He doesn't look that much bigger. So I think it must be, he must have grown in height instead. Right. There we go, yeah, Harry Kane, he needs the... It's the Harry Kane look. He needs the, the triple XL jumper. That's, when Harry Kane grows a foot, he'll, his sweater will still be too big for him. He'll grow into it. <laughs> when you buy something that's too big, oh, he'll grow into it. Logan Bowles then. And it's clipped away out towards deepish mid-on for a run. From Ageson. Striving for a first wicket of the match, the left arm spinner, Yorkshireman, James Logan. Really? He's very Yorkshire. Oh, is he? This is pushed away out towards deep point. He's Wakefield. Yeah, that's Yorkshire. But Rhubarb Triangle. Uh, Wakefield, Castleford, Pontchef, that's where all the nation's rhubarb is grown. Okay, excellent. Yeah. When he first signed for Kent, we did this interview with him because he played in a T20 game earlier on in the season. This one's clipped away out towards mid-on. He'd played a couple of second-team games, having been released by Yorkshire at the end of last season. And Kent basically chucked him straight into this first T20 at home because Case Ahmad hadn't arrived yet and Kaim had retired. He wanted a front-line spinner. He's defended away by Aitchison and yeah, we were chatting to him after. He, he played the game, bowled really well. Chatted to him afterwards and 
telling us how he was still staying in the hotel around the corner. And yeah. It was really lovely. In Travel Lodge. Aye. <laughs> Where's the phrase? As he bowls, he's all Ooh. slapped away into the onside. It was a bit of a drag by Aitchison. He's going to get four for it. Horrible. Potentially the ugliest boundary we've yeah. seen in the match. Well, Aitchison got his half century, his first class half century, his first first class half century in very similar circumstances when Derbyshire were hurtling towards defeat against Nottinghamshire earlier this season and uh, put in a couple of big hits, bit of late ent entertainment for the crowd. Of course, uh, it is clearly not up to the bowlers to try and get the batsmen out of trouble game after game after game and, and almost certainly it won't happen but uh, you can hit a long ball deep square has gone out now Jack Leaning another Yorkshireman has gone out there well York's a bit posh to be proper Yorkshire I always think that's where I grew up near, near New York mm. hated every minute of it I moved from the Wirral Wakefield sort of industrial West Yorkshire that's where the printing press for my first proper newspaper was in Wakefield, Wakefield Express, Pontley Franklin Castle, but around that area. He's uh, got such a dainty and interesting start to he his run-up with he? his arms. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like it's, it's almost looks like it's been choreographed. It's brilliant. I do enjoy watching us. Slow bowlers, spin bowlers tend to have more of that, don't they? And there are different run-ups for the quicks, but I do love a, a slow bowler coming into bowl. This is a, not a, sm a slow ball. It's Grant Stewart bowling to Anuj Dahl, who pushes it out into the offside. I'm trying to remember who the bowler is, who uh, just before every delivery, he just flicks his hand out to his right. I think he plays for Warwickshire, but I, I wouldn't swear to it. It's not Lintop. Kyam used to have this little kick of his heels as he yeah, you know, did his... Yeah, great. I love all that. Logan actually gets right up on his... I think he gets right up on his toes before he goes into his action. Oh, sure. Look again in a minute. Well, he might not get an opportunity. Stuart bowls and uh, Dahl defends. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And when you said he's still striving for his first wicket, I think we should take a little bit pity on him. He's only bowled two overs. In fairness, In yeah. the entire match. Yeah. So, uh... He's just trying to join the party. To single him out as the bowler who hasn't got a wicket might be a bit harsh at this early stage. He's of been his, somewhat uh, left out of the, uh, the party <laughs> in this game. Uh, Kent beating Derbyshire with just 10 men. They did have 11 in the squad, but one of them didn't do anything. Stewart's it again, a bowls, and that one is a good full-length delivery. It's whipped away by uh, Alan's Dahl down to fine leg, and they're going to come back for the second as well. Dahl is quick. My word, he's quick. It's uh, a bit like being the groomsman that's been on car park duty. He kind of tucked out of the way and not yeah. involved in the frivolity. Yeah. yeah. Moves on to 11, 130 for seven. Jack Leanings throwing an arm over. Harry Pummel's getting warmed up. Everyone fancies the ball. I'm surprised. Dal Wade Stewart is in and he goes back into his crease and pushes this out towards the point boundary for a single. Moves to 12. 31 for seven. Yeah, fill both books in and then do the score. Well, that's always the future. So, yeah, is the chap doing the scoring doing the announcing as well? No, I'm doing two score books. That's quite yeah. a multitasking yeah, job. And he's 110. In comes a bouncer from Stuart. That is a very high it's a no bouncer. Ball. It's a no ball. Two added to the total, 133. For seven. Yeah, we don't think we'll be able to do the news all singing, all dancing scoreboard. Although we're not sure. When I say we, uh, me and other members of the media, what they do with it, they're entirely their own business. Next delivery is, uh, oh, in the air, and that's uh, just to the right of the man at point off the bat of Ben Aitchison. He would have been very disappointed to have got out in such a tame way had it happened. He moves to 16 with the single. 134 for 7. Nick's been back. He's trying to add some positivity to my afternoon. Well, I'm suggesting that we should just be thankful that there's no relegation from Division 3 and that we're safe for another year is necessarily the positive I was looking for, Nick, if I'm entirely honest. Um... <laughs> 
as this next delivery is defended by Dahl. Out into the offside end of the other, 134 for 7, Dahl 12, Aitchison 16, three more wickets, well, two more wickets in reality required by Kent, 207 needed by Derbyshire. He says if the ECB do decide that they'll start promoting minor counties to the county championship, there'll be some picturesque away days to come. Norfolk in August, delightful. Well, yes, at Norfolk in August will be delightful, but I don't think necessarily what the ECB want to do is replace counties with other counties. I think they just want to get rid of counties. That's the impression I get. So uh, you'd have to keep your fingers crossed that the counties that they get rid of are accepted into the minor counties. Oh, yeah, right arm, right outlook. Brilliant. Defended by Aitchison. You watch his right arm go. Yeah, the right arm points out towards me wicket. Jazz hands to the right. Lovely. And then he draws something. He's like a yeah. draws a circle with his left. Astonishing. But he's he's toes, up on the toes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he does. Driven down the ground by Aitchison up towards mid off. He also holds the ball almost in his hands like a V. Ball in his left hand and his other hand joined at the wrist in a V. That's fantastic. There's so many little things, isn't there, yeah. to comment on. There he goes up on the toes. Out goes the left arm, then the the right arm. They dragged that one down a bit, didn't they? Out towards cover. I'm st I've started to make my own entertainment, as you can tell. Oh, yeah. I wonder, yeah, I wonder if it's off-putting as a batsman. Mm. When a spinner's bowling with slightly peculiar action, unorthodox action, as Logan has. Billings is just trying to move Bell Drummond around the corner a touch as Dull defends he's low, a couple of deliveries the right arm on the follow through is he's, he's leaving it in the air he's bowl he's oh, right. going through the action and then the right arm staying very high pointing to this here he comes again oh it's chipped back towards him by Dull off a bump ball no, he didn't do it that time. No, he didn't, did he? No. I'm glad he didn't do it that time because I thought you were seeing things. I keep I'm watching him even closer now. I'm not sure how, he, how he's getting to that point in the follow through where the hand was pointing up. Oh, there you go. So yeah. he, he goes, as it's defended, back towards him. He goes so f fully through with the, the action that his non bowling hand ends up behind him in the air and he just kind of leaves it there for a bit. Into the over anyway. The one three five for seven. <laughs> Dahl's got twelve. aitchison has got seventeen. Nice. Logan hasn't got a wicket yet, as I pointed out earlier on. But he's trying. I said he's only bowled three overs. Fifty to go. Fifty overs to get two wickets, or to last for a draw for Derbyshire. Clock ticking on Ben Aitchison's ghetto air as well. If it helps uh, Ian in any way, we could request speaking to him. That would slow him down. <laughs> well, if he gets a half century or beats his previous high score, I'm all over him. Here's Harry. Quite the sharp haircut that Harry Pop Moore's got these days. I'm not sure it was that sharp when he was on loan from Middlesex. I can see him for the first time because he's at our end. He's in and bowls to Aitchison, who uh, clips that one into the leg side. By Jazz Singh, there's no room. Last season he dyed it. Really? It was silver fox territory, oh, like Philip Schofield yeah. stuff. He was whiter than the kind of Gaza Foden haircut there, almost. Or is this dyed and that's his real colour? No. No, okay. No. okay. Right, but I'd, I'd like to think that he was trend setting before everyone else did it <laughs> during the Euros. <laughs> that one's flicked away down to a long leg by. Van Aitchison for another single. He moves on to 18, 136. Liam, the Kent Media Officer, has sent me a message saying, don't mention this on air, but I'm... I'm Excellent. Sure, but I, so, so I'm going to read out. No, I'm not. But just, just to tease, he said, there's something going out on social media tomorrow which is related to Logan's bowling action. So I kind of have given oh, away yeah. half of what You're he said not to reveal, don't, but don't, I, I feel like don't mention said, it. I feel like I've previewed it. I've bigged it up. Yeah, don't mention it again, though. Pop Moore's in, defended by Dahl. Stay tuned, folks. Yeah. I'm going to have to start. I think I do follow... I'm not sure if I do or not. We very rarely play them. I follow a lot of the counties just to uh, 
find out what's going on, but we so infrequently play Kent, it seems. But, uh, Turn your notifications on for Kent Cricket's Twitter tomorrow. <laughs> Next delivery is full and driven out into the offside. Nice stop, diving away to his left hand side by Bell Drummond. In fairness, if you had them on today, you'd probably be doing all right for yourself with the amount of wickets seven so far for Kent. Yeah. Oh, ball's gone back to the umpire. They're not happy with it again. How can you be unhappy with a ball that's. We've taken seven wickets for 136. Yeah, they're. In 35 they're, overs. Yeah. I'm just going to remove something from it, possibly, then, as he's putting it through the uh, caliper. Well, it's dropped to the floor, so that's uh, clearly going through the uh, the measuring device. <laughs> and, uh, Sam Bellings continues the conversation, despite the fact that the ball went through the uh, measuring device so quickly that it plummeted to the ground. I genuinely don't think we've had something like this all season. Is it just a Sam Billings thing that he does? And now he's been with the England Test squad that they have this thing about the shape of the ball. Well, Derby should change the ball at least three times in one of the innings, didn't they? Or tried to. Yeah. Here comes Bob Moore. Oh, yeah, sorry, it was me, wasn't it? They've gone for a quick single. There's a shy at the stumps from Billings that misses Aitchis and gets home as a result. But it must have been close because Billings is down on his haunches with his hands across his face. Well, the single added to Dahl's score. He moves to 13, 137 for seven. I'm just completely losing it now. I'm so busy already in thinking ahead to a Hove, which at least is a pleasant place for your final game of the season. It, could it been, is very pleasant. It could have been Nottingham or... Well, actually, that's the only bad place. <laughs> Next delivery is defended like by it. Just, no, I'm not a big fan. Like of no. Okay. No. Could have been Essex. Yes, yeah, Chelmsford. That's 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 less picturesque than than it might be for a place that was the capital city of England in Roman times. End of the over, one thirty-seven for seven. Dahl thirteen, Aitchison on eighteen. I think Jar Singh's gonna have a ball, replacing Logan at the city end of the ground. Apparently, I was when I was doing my Logan bowling impression a moment ago. It was on the live stream. So thanks for whoever. Excellent. Well done, well done Elliot. That. Well done, Elliot. That's good work from uh, Elliot. It's his last day today, Elliot. It's his last day. Our uh, our guru in the uh, control room. It does a magnificent job. I no, no idea how we're going to get somebody as adequate as he is to uh, to do the job next season. Chasing bowls left alone outside the off stump. I'd have made more. I'd have uh, focused on my appearance a bit more. I'd have like combed my hair or something if I'd have yeah. known I was going to be on camera for yeah. four days. Although I did spot the webcam and thought, oh, maybe maybe there's a possibility. Yes, no, it, we we do appear from time to time. That's why I Apolog always that's, yeah. why, that's why I always dress up. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Apologies for everyone at home <laughs> on that regard. Cut away for four runs here by an Stout. Oh, Drummond's not going to cut that off. It's gone. Almost underneath the covers. As Bell Drummond went and fetched it. So 137 for 7, 13 Dahl, 18 Aitchison. Well, it would say it's gone up to 1 for, for 1 now, sorry. And I don't want to embarrass Elliot in any way, shape, or form because that's not what I'm here for, is it? Obviously. That's a sing bowls to Dahl, who's now on 17, rather. Left alone outside the off stump. But the. Uh, Derbyshire stream is as good as any in the country, and that includes all the independent ones that are going about. Uh, and it does a remarkable job with cameras that keep breaking and students that keep failing to turn up. Two slips in the gully, you sing balls, and this one's left outside the off stump. We'll forgive him for missing that Jack Leaning catch. Well, that that is a bit of a blot on his co on his copybook, and uh, and any request to stay for next season would have been immediately turned down as a result, obviously. But uh, poor old Josh, who's up on the, the the balcony of the pavilion on the far side. Oh yeah, I spot him. 
pulled away by Dahl. There's, is there a fielder out there? There is. There is. Oh, it's sliding effort to try and stop it, but Harry right. Podmore can't. So four more runs down in Dahl. 21 for him, 1 4 5 for 7, the Derbyshire score. Somebody asked Josh at, uh, at lunchtime, he said, What about in the ground are you? He said, he, he said Well, I'm on, the, I'm on the pavilion. He said, Oh, do you like it? So I haven't got much option, really. I'm the only one here. Apparently, Colchester, not Chelmsford, was the Roman capital of Britain. Oh, sorry. I mean, you know, two, well, what was Chelmsford 1, 2, 3 all about then? You remember the sick? I know that wasn't a factual programme. I know it was done by the people who did Drop the Dead Donkey, I think, and that kind of thing. But Chelmsford 1, 2, 3. Apologies for that, but you're absolutely right. Yeah, Colchester's not particularly nice either. <laughs> oh, I mean, as a, as a man of Kent, I'm, or a Kentish man, to be so specific, as this one's left alone outside the off stump, I'm. I'm, I, any jokes towards Essex I'm fully on board with yeah yeah well their new ground's awful and that miles away from anywhere on an industrial estate Dave and Fens I went there the other week did he yeah it really is just off the moment it's right, miles it? away from anywhere yeah yeah he's originally from, he's a Kemp fan originally from Canterbury but now lives in Colchester hence the oh, right, okay. no know. fair play fair play stand corrected Harry Podmore, after his slight misfield and on the boundary, he's going to continue from the race course. That'd be bowling to Ben Aitchison. He's on 18, 145 for seven. He just taps it into the leg side. And there's no run. These two have added 43 so far for the eighth wicket. By some distance, the highest partnership of the uh, innings. Which sort of suggests is that, that if you hang around a bit, tire the bowlers out a bit, there are runs to be had out there. That's what Matt Critchley said to you, wasn't it? Pretty That's much. Not. Pretty much. Next delivery is driven out towards the uh, wide long off boundary. I'd say four runs, but it's Billings who's chasing it, so it won't be four runs because he gets there now and Aitchison gets back for a third run. He moves to 21, joins Dahl on 21, 148 for seven, and the partnership up to 46. Be nice to see a half century stand between these two. Maybe Ben Aitchison secretly knows that he's not going to the Liverpool game tonight and is therefore trying to make the most of it. He's certainly batting that way, isn't he? As though he doesn't really have an appointment later on. He'd given up all hope of going. <laughs> Next delivery from Bob Moore is pushed out into the offside by uh, Anna Stone. Well, his dad's trying to undo what he's done. So the, the irony would be if Aitchison was still batting out there at six o'clock today and he had a season <laughs> ticket in his hand and nobody used it. That'd be no good for anyone. <laughs> 148 for seven. 12th man jogging around the boundary's edge. That's a very good effort. And the searing heat here at the Encora County ground in Derby is pop more is in and bowls to Dahl, who defends it to Bell Drummond. Uh, extra cover. I think it's Matt Quinn. It's tall. Yeah, it must be Matt Quinn. Mm, tall. So as a man of New Zealand, it's, he's quite quite balmy. Yeah, no, Matt Quinn. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mind a bit of wind and horizontal rain. He's another one who kind of what had on loan this season and then signed already up for next season. So he's effectively. Say Gronenberg's replacement. Right. This was my point earlier on. I can't really see Kent doing much business. Yeah. This one is defended by Dahl. Roland Drummond comes across in front of Sam Billings to do the fielding. Potentially an update for BBC Radio Derby coming up fairly shortly. Who knows? It's a good job that. Uh, Oh, ice cream vans arrived. Here's Popmore in and bowls to Dahl, who pushes this out into the offside. It's the end of the over. 21 apiece for Dahl and Aitchis, and partnerships worth 46. They're 148 for seven. They're still a massive 193 runs away from what would be the most unlikely victory in cricket history, whereas uh, Kent are just two wickets away with Sam Connors. Not going to be able to take his place out there with that injury that he's got. What's going on here? Let's have a look. Going on elsewhere. 
Uh, Middlesex, Worcestershire. Worcestershire need 108 more runs to beat Middlesex, or 113 for seven, so that's not going to happen. Leicestershire declared on 492 for four. Sussex are 12 without loss, trailing by 121. Uh, sorry, 28 without loss following on against Essex. They trail by 250 as Jazz Singh is in from the city. And oh, a swing and a miss from Ben Aitchison outside the off stump. Perhaps not the shot. Uh, Warwickshire have beaten Yorkshire by 106 runs in the first division. Yorkshire bowled out for 117 in the second innings, having been bowled out for 108 in their first. Gloucestershire have beaten Glamorgan by 10 wickets at Sophia Gardens. As in comes Jazz Singh again, bowls to Aitchison, who's a bit more circumspect this time, and pushes the ball out into the offside. And there is no run. Durham... We're bowled out for 400. Northamptonshire 130 for seven. Second time round, still trailing by 87. So Durham still on course for an innings victory there. And you are, I think, bang up today. As Chan Singh is in again. This one is pushed out into the offside by Ben Aitchison. I had been told Jack was producing afternoons this week, but I'm not sure if he didn't produce breakfast this morning. No communication with the studio at all. As in comes Singh again and bowls to Aitchison, who slaps it back down the ground. There's no, no other word for it. It was a slap. It's being chased by Stewart, who gets there now slides into the covers and into the advertising boards, but keeps the ball in play. Good commitment. And they get back for three runs, and Ben Aitchison moves on to 24. Matt's this afternoon. Excellent. Afternoon, Matt, if you're listening. I'm out the cricket. Let him know, Ed, if you wouldn't mind. Last day of home cricket this season. Just sings on his way in again from the city and bowls outside the off stump. Dahl leaves alone. Thanks, Matt. Excellent. Matt Barlow back in the studio knows I'm here. That's excellent news. And I can jump off the commentary and update uh, FM listeners. Well, I just told BBC Ready Kent listeners that to not have any fear, Kent will win this game at some point today. Oh, excellent work. Excellent work. So if I say that they will as well, and they won't, this one is pushed out to the offside. Partnership worth 49. End of the over. Dahl 21. Aitchison 24. It'll be the first half century stand of the innings coming in the middle of the afternoon session on day four. T will be at 10 past three no matter what, except if Derbyshire are eight or nine down, I think. And they'll just carry on because they did at Middlesex. I don't quite understand all that business, so uh, apologies if I get slightly confused about when T is and isn't. I'm struggling with the, with the half-hour start. Put more in a bowling then. Oh, that was a big play and miss for Ben Aitchison. He's done that a couple of times, hasn't he, in the last two overs? Through to the keeper, 24 for him. 21 doll, 151 for seven. Yeah, we're doing our best. Can't wait to talk this up, talk this game into a to an exciting session. game. Yeah, to a yeah, final session. Yeah, yeah. Gilchrist warming up now. Matt Quinn's tiptoeing around the boundary's edge. Pommore's bowling. Aitchison defending. Billings picking the ball up at cover. See, Aitchison looks more than capable of staying out there for a long, long time, but that's not necessarily what we want to see because defeat is almost inevitable. I'd like to see him teeing off. Going down with a fight, yeah. Type of stuff. Well, get get to the half century stand and then go for it. <laughs> I want to say go for it. Hit the ball a lot. Put more bowling to him. Oh, there he's clipped go. this one away down towards long leg for a run. Fifty stand. Marvellous. Oh, I'm off. Let's see if Fred's going punch gloves or something, lads. I don't know there. 
Just gonna carry on. That queen's putting in some uh, some steps around the boundary's edge. A minute ago he was by the the bar to one side of the, the temporary stand. Oh, inside edge from Dahl. Chao Singh running in. They're going for two. Dahl so quick he makes it back five. The next minute, the ball was, um, Queen Rival is back over the other side of the ground. Really pleasant day here in Derby. Really quite warm and pleasant out in the sunshine. And the ground bathed in it so far, clearly. The cricket is enjoying being out there. Quick single from Dahl up towards mid on. Oh, that was a wild throw from Grant Stewart. Essentially could have been overthrows, but Dahl has run a long way past the stumps. So it will just be one for him. He moves to 25. Aitchison has 25. 155, 56 on the scoreboard, depending on if I've beaten it or if it's still to update. And posted back at deep square leg. Paul Paul with three slips in a gully. Aitchison pushes this one out towards Marcus O'Reardon, who must be on as the subfielder. Well, he is on as the subfielder. End of the over, 1557. Dial, in fact, it's got 24, 25 for Aitchison. Some spectators down below us sharing in their joke. It's just Singh's about to continue from the city end of the ground. A bit of traffic passing by the roundabout. Just outside the ground. Sing bowls to Dahl and defended away. I'm back. As if it makes any difference. <laughs> People are going, oh no. He's back. Is the cricket bringing you any joy, asked Sally. <laughs> well... Jersing balls, nudged away into the onside by Anuj Dahl, who I would suggest so far this week has suggest has showed that he could be a very competent cricketer. Yeah, absolutely. Year. Absolutely. No, he's done really well. He got uh, 48 and four wickets and was run out unluckily at Lords. He showed in that big stand last week, didn't pick up any wickets, has got wickets in this match and some runs and a 50 partnership. Sing bowls. Hson slightly outside edges, out towards point. Bill Drummond does the fielding. One or two people inside this ground who are clapping him furiously now and offering their support weren't quite doing the same earlier this season. You know who you are. They're allowed to change their mind. Yeah, I thought they were being a bit harsh at the time. Sing bowls, that may well be true. It's just run off the outside edge to the left of Bell Drummond and they come through for a single. These two continuing to show some good application. Yeah. And in a way, kind of showing up some of the top order, aren't they? I know the yes. ball is that bit softer. Well, it is, but then again, if you hang around, eventually you'll be batting against a softer ball, won't you, if you can just stay out there and not play poor shots. Jersing balls. Crawley's been posted in a short mid-wicket, moved out of slip as he plays it in to go reading in the covers, the subfielder is on. And that's why the, the, the timing of the declaration was so important. They will, it won't get to that, I'm sure, but they would only have had five overs with the new ball, mm. which is the problem that Darbish had in the game against Worcestershire early in the season, that they've had their best opportunity to win but failed. Seeing with that nice tall action is cut away by Anand Dahl for four runs. He 
bouncy balls. He's lightning in the field. He's useful. He's not yet under contract for next season, though. Uh, no, I, I believe not. Sign him up. I believe not. 29 for him, 16147. Of course, this is the problem with not having a coach for next season. I mean, <laughs> if, if you've been offered one, do you sign it? and then hope that the coach next season likes you. Do you not sign it and wait for him to come in? And then he says, well, actually, we're not interested, so uh, you can go. And then you're scrambling about for another contract. I'm, I'm sure he will sign it. I'm sure he will sign it. But I hope he does, because he's been one of the shining lights along with Brooke Guest in the closing stages of this season. No question about it. I've been too many of them. Ben Aitchison's bowled nicely. Sam Connors has bowled decently in this last... Round of matches in Division 3. 161 for 7. 180 required. Ben Aitchison on 26. Waits as Harry Popmore begins a new over and he drives him back towards Popmore. He tries to just guide it towards the stumps. He, he doesn't manage to do so. But uh, Dahl was back anyway. It's starting to warm up out there, judging by the way Dahl has removed his helmet and is mopping his brow furiously. He'll be pressing that hat down in a minute. All that sweat will pour out. There is nothing worse in cricket than the close-up of the batsman <laughs> pressing the helmet down on the top of his head and water just cascading out. Grim. Think away to my left-hand side. I can see the head of cricket as this one is pushed out into the offside. Nicely by Ben Aitchison. It might not be him, but it looks a bit like him. Dave Houghton wasn't here first thing this morning. Didn't see him anyway. Mal Loy is there. I think it's Mal Loy. It might not even be Mal. Oh God, I wish my eyes were better. At the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. Might be uh, Darren Smith who was helping with the warm-ups this morning, who's head of the pathway here. Podmore bowls, and that is guided out. Backward a square on the offside, and they scamper through for a quick single. Dahl moves on to, to 30 now, 163 for seven. The partnership up to 61. If we knew what the record partnership for the seventh wicket was, because we saw it last week against all comers. I'm not going to bother looking at the eighth wicket just yet, but these two are going along nicely. Aitchison waits as Podmore bowls to him, and that one is just a little short of a length, and he's a tall man, is Aitchison, so he has no trouble just getting up on his tiptoes and pushing it out into the offside. Where it's fielded by Sam Billings, who's found himself at extra cover. He's now Telling Jazz Singh he's got one more over to go, I think. Or is he saying, take a blow for now? Well, we'll soon find out. <laughs> Bob Moore bowls, that one is whipped into the leg side. Nick Cook pretends that he's going to catch it. Bounces before it reaches Bell Drummond. He picks up another single, moves to 2864. 4 7. It's nothing worse as a bowler than being told when you feel it, when you fancy you can go being told nah, actually take a blow there mate three overs for 17 in his current spell nine overs one for 34 in total he's bowled okay I think he's going to get another over you know Bob Moore is in and he's turned off his pads by Dahl it's a square leg it's the end of the over we're going to find out now he's trotting in as though he is going to bowl the next over from the city end is Jazz Singh. Dahl has 30, Aitchison has 28, Derbyshire 164 for 7. Their target's 341, it means they've got another 177 to get, but Kent only need to get two more wickets, and they will have secured their third victory in Division 3 and strengthened their hopes of claiming the Division 3 title and, with, and all the prestige that goes with it. Jazz Singh from the city end of the ground. A little bit of a waft. <laughs> On the move. From Aitchison. Yeah, that Division 3 title is there um, going to be a open top bus parade through Canterbury? Yeah, I'd have thought so. Maybe 
with the, the trophy in the shape of three stumps. Yeah. And sort of three stumps slash three in Roman numerals. Um, just singing and bowling. Defending out towards extra cover. Kent's reward. Um, maybe place in Division 1 in next season. Mm. If we go back to divisions, if we go back to two divisions, they will be. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed the knots don't win the title. And yeah. Which they were anyway, so. Uh, I'll get a tweet. Sing. Oh, oh, smacked back down the ground towards mid off. That's one of his shots, isn't it, really? The old. Uh, sort of flat back. Flat bat back towards the bowler. Ben H, isn't it? Singh's got three slips. Oh, oh and it's been edged over the top of them by H. Sin. Slamming into an advertising hoarding. Ken Beaumont says, if you enjoy extravagant bowling actions, there's none better than Cameron Carner, who played for Derbyshire Seconds last week. I'm going to see if I can find him. I think he's actually smashed into the blotter. Yeah. There's a gap in the yeah. hoarding there. Ipswich Ben saying, looks like next week's match will be the Division 3 decider between Kent and Middlesex Ooh. at Canterbury. The big one. Never mind T20 finals day. Oh, he's been smashed here, Jazz Singh. Down the ground by Ben Ageson. One bounce and four. That is a fine strike of a cricket ball. You want to see a horrible action? Cameron Khan, who played for Derbyshire seconds last week. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness and, me. Oh. No front arm once he bowls, but there's plenty of wafting on the way in. He's doing the YMCA on the way back to the crease. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz Singh bowls and down the ground again. Yeah. This time it's in the air. It could well be caught. It is caught by Nathan Gilchrist. And Ben Aitchison's resistance comes to an end. He's mistimed that strike down the ground. Jazz Singh has a second wicket. Gilchrist with a catch. He departs for 36. Kent need one more wicket to win. Derbyshire 172 for eight. I think he just got fed up batting, didn't he, in the end? Did uh, Ben Aitchison, which is a bit of a shame, really. It was entertaining while it lasted. 36 from 46. We, we should in no way suggest that it's down to the number nine batsman or number 10 as he started. Three fours and a six. 46 delivery, deliveries he was out there for, but at 172 for eight, the end is now. He did manage to add 70 for the uh, eighth wicket with... Hannah's dull. So a bit of late defiance. Uh, Dustin Melton, which one of his two shots are we going to see when he comes out? That's the question. That's what it says on the board. Uh, yeah, the end is very much uh, in sight now, though. As out comes Dustin Melton down the steps. I'm fairly certain we're not going to. It doesn't look, look, yeah, it is Dustin, I think. I'm told we're not going to see Sam Connors, and it's not, unless these two put on 160, I don't think we would see Sam Connors. And as Dahl could look, get left high and dry here, he's on 30. 49 balls, three fours, batted sensibly. Doesn't actually look tall enough to be Dustin Melton now, but it's not Sam Connors, so it must be. John Brown's taking his time. Weighing up his options. Who is it? Who might it be? We'll get an announcement shortly. And Derbyshire are on the brink of yet another defeat, I'm afraid, here at the uh, county ground. Didn't win a game at home in 2015, in 2016. And they're not going to win a game here at Derby in 2021 either. They did win two in 18 and 19, but there we go. There's that Podmore. Bowls to Dahl. Pushed out into the offside. And there's no run. I'll let Ben finish his uh, 
He's tweaked and he can take over for the denouement. Win three out of three for Kent in Division 3. And if Sussex go on to draw their game with Leicestershire, as looks likely, Derbyshire will be bottom of the table ahead of their trip to Hove as Podmore is in and bowls to Darlow drives it. Up to uh, Logan, who's fielding at mid-off. And there's no run. They might not get to T. Who'd have thought? Well, me, for one. Another Derbyshire capitulation in the county championship. Put more bowls. That one is pushed out into the offside. You've got more chance of the victory coming now. As they take a single, unless it was the last ball of the over, I didn't think it was. So Melton will be on strike, Ben. Here we go, the big moment. Build yourself up. The big run up. Build yourself up. Coming in off the long run. In fairness to Aitchison, although it was a slightly disappointing way to end, it was a defiant innings. Yeah. Played some good shots in there as well. Has Paul Moore in and bowling. Oh, wow, didn't. Wasn't too far away from sneaking through the guard, but actually, he did well. Didn't he? he did well <laughs> he to did keep it out. Really well, uh, Dustin Milton. <laughs> Nudges it into the leg side and gets a single. Technically, well, not even technically, he's an overseas player, Dustin Milton. Trying to get a settled status, but seven years in, hasn't managed it yet. Got another season next season as an overseas player. Harry Pummel running into Unhinged Dart. Watchfully played behind Square on the onside. Played it nice and late, actually. Just thinking about coming back for two, but... We've got two different styles of running here, haven't we? One yeah. very quick and the other one not so much. The other one looks fairly disinterested in running. <laughs> <laughs> quick two. One seven five for eight. Sam Connors won't bat, so Kent need one more wicket to win. As Pommel balls a full delivery, big shout for LBW. It's given by the umpire. The victory is Kent's. It's three in a row in the county championship for Sam Billings' team and Derbyshire. All out for 175. The margin of victory: 165 runs. Comprehensive. In the end, didn't need to bat this morning. Clearly, uh, they decided against it, but uh, just a little bit of an insurance policy for Kent this morning. And his dial, bless him, finishes on 32, not out. And uh, moves on to Hove, as do Derbyshire in search of that first win of the season in the county championship. 53 deliveries, and his dial faced for his 32, 46 deliveries. Ben Aitchison faced for his 40, uh, 36. Uh, and that sort of shows you that if you hang around, you can hang around, if that makes any sense. And in the end, Derbyshire all out. Well, 175 for nine, effectively all out. We'll now be informed about that, I'm sure, by the... Uh, Unless... Well, they're staying out there, aren't they? Oh, he's coming out with the runner. Sam Connors comes out with the runner. It isn't all over. Well, well, well. No, I've, that's going to make a terrible mess of my notes. It's taking, making a terrible mess of my tweets all day that have been saying that Kent only... Yeah, well, that's kids. what we were told, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Actually, having words with everybody, of course, who informed us that he wouldn't take any further part in this match. I gave it the big one as well. <laughs> People holding up their arms who were told categorically by the medical staff that Sam Connors would take no further part in this match and I, I, I attach no blame because I know how difficult it is to get accurate information out of the changing room well now it's one more wicket for Kent to go and win the game and in a way it's nice to see Sam Connors out there isn't it always nice to see Sam just cross all this out here <laughs> nightmare Logan Bowling to Darley defends I'd put DNB <laughs> Not that out. Thanks. <laughs> James 
is Logan. Numberless. Dal clips this nicely into the leg side. They've run one, and there's a shout of no. It should be Connors who calls. But he's got to remember to stay behind. Uh, It's, it's chaos when there's a runner out there. Well, I, I literally only a moment ago I told the Kent media officer that definitely... <laughs> no, no, absolutely, no. No, me. well... But there we go. It, the Dar it, I will absolve the Derbyshire media boys of... I, mean, I wouldn't blame them anyway, but of, of anything to do with this. This has come entirely out of the blue. They were told that Sam Connors would take no further part in this game. They passed that on in good faith. And, and in that, fairness, we we were kind of expecting it at the time, even when he yeah, was batting yeah, he was, well, he's on been day for a, two. And as we know from Ben Aitchison this morning, he's been for a scan. <laughs> as he told the crowd. Yeah, he's telling the crowd. <laughs> well, he's on the strike. Logan bowling to him, and he's defending tentatively. Getting forward on the front foot there. The other thing is, of course, this will be Sam Connor's last cricket of the season, you would have thought. I can't imagine he's going to have recovered in time to face Sussex down at Hove. Bowles does Logan. Pushed away once again. But now you know that uh, what to say when, when they do win, because you, you've already done it once. I've already done yeah, it, yeah, nice rehearsal. Who knows, the stream might have stopped. They might have switched it all off and said, yep, that's, that's that. Just pretend. Just Frantically turning cameras back on. Just save that bit of audio <laughs> and play it again later. This one is pushed away. And just pretend that was the last wicket and Connors came in at nine. Yeah. Gave you the, gave you, gave you the big build up. Remarkable. Jordan Cox has got the shin pads on, but is wandering down to short the fine leg where he's just got the just got the ball because Connors has dug out delivery from James Logan that was fired in towards leg stump. Manages to survive that over. End of it. Derbyshire are nine down and they're still out there on the field because Sam Connors has appeared. As Mark points out, he did injure himself batting, which uh, if, if Connors aggravates the injury. Uh, he can't play next week. He says he doesn't really understand, but... Or if he does aggravate the injury, so he can't play next week. Well, I'm, I think the injury is there. I don't think it's a matter of aggravating it. I think he's injured. He's walking a lot better now than he walked... Uh, was it yesterday? Was it the day? Oh, it wasn't yesterday because it was rained off. Day before yesterday. Pop more balls too dull. No run. So it's Adam's dull. 176 for nine. It remains. Dahl has 33, so he's not going to be left stranded on 32 anymore. Because he's already scored a run since then. All about information. Pop more bowls too, and he pushes it up into the onside again. No run, even though the ball is dribbling towards Grant Stewart. I don't know what I'd rather do if I was a Kent player right now. You know, stand out there in the very nice sunshine or... Oh, this is interesting because because the ground... Well, the ground staff hadn't been told that he was going to have a runner either, so they haven't marked the, the creases at either end. <laughs> I mean, it's mad. Excellent. It's turned into the leg side by Dahl, Brooke Guest. So, so this really does show that absolutely that nobody, nobody knew. That no, no, nobody knew. Because if if Derbyshire had said, well, yes, he'll, he might bat with the runner, then the ground staff would have sorted out the creases at either end. Whether or not the umpires now feel it's uh, necessary, we won't have tea in ten minutes either. If these two are still batting, that'll be pushed back. I think fifteen minutes, potentially half an hour. But Neil Grod Godrich is waiting there with his uh, plank of wood with a slit down the middle in his spray can. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, brilliant. Cool. Oh. One more bowls. Oh, that was an inside edge onto the stumps. Onto the pad, rather. Not far away from going onto the stumps. Connor's keeping it out. Rather than swinging from the hip like he did in the first innings, he's very much just trying to... You know what's going to happen, don't you? Yeah, I'm going to have to go next door. Well, that's when it's going to happen, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think you're right. 
mid update or when I'm midway between rooms. Yeah. Here comes Bob Moore. Full delivery. Oh, no ball. Anyway. I think there was going to be a big appeal I there. I thought there was going to be, yeah. But the umpire signalling no ball. There's been a bunch of no balls and wides yeah, and have. whatnot in this game. Right, last mm. chance before I. They've had uh, go next door. seven no balls and a wide in this innings alone. One more in and bowls. Full delivery, which has been kept out. Sadly. I'll, I'll try and do them justice, Ben. I'll try and do them justice. Unless I'm doing an update as well, which means that we will miss the big moment. Well, we won't, because we'll report the big moment. In goes Podmore and bowls to uh, Sam Connors, who clips that one up to long on. There is no run, end of the over. <laughs> 170, thanks, Ed. 179 for nine. Dahl, 34. Sam Connors with a runner. Has yet to get off the mark. And the groundsman is now coming out, Neil Godrich, to mark out. Because he hadn't been informed that there was going to be a runner. To mark out the creases some distance away so that the umpires have got an accurate measure of a, a potential run out or not. Remember the runner and the batsman whose runner it is. Both have to be behind the return crease. No, the, the popping crease, the front crease, one of the creases anyway. Uh, both have to be behind the crease to make sure they're in. Well, they're on the brink of defeat here, Wesley, 179 for nine. And surprisingly, Sam Connors, who didn't bowl because he suffered an injury batting in the first in the innings, has come out with a runner. He's yet to get off the mark. Anuj Dahl has 34. The two latest dismissals, Ben Aitchison for a very bright and breezy 36, added 70 for the eighth wicket with Dahl. And Dustin Melton, who lasted just two balls for his one. 179 for nine, Derbyshire. Plenty of time left in this game. Kent need one more wicket. <laughs> no, you should be absolutely right. Not for long at all, I'm afraid. Neil Godrich has now marked out the return crease at the far end. Or is it the popping crease? I have no idea what it is. It's a crease. It's white and it's been marked. And Neil God Godrich is now making his way off. Unfortunately, he's been asked to make his way off to the side of the ground furthest away from his uh, groundsman's Shared away to our right hand side. He's gone all the way over to the left. And the new over begins from James Logan. The ball is clipped into the leg side by Dahl. There's no room. Talk about matter of time. 39 overs remaining. One wicket to get for Kent. And Sam Connors out there with a runner. And it's Dahl, the senior batsman. Defends this one back to Logan. He goes back to the top of his mark. If he takes his time, Ben will be back. He's on his way in now. Bowls, that's dropped short. And Dahl cuts it away for a single down to Bell Drummond. Which brings Sam Connors back on to strike. And now he's gone to the wrong side, so it doesn't make any difference at all. He hasn't gone to the side where the uh, crease has been marked. That's almost entirely pointless. Neil Godrich coming out onto the field of play, but there we go. I'm sure he enjoyed the exercise. Logan in, defended by Connors. There's no run. In a little closer comes Grant Stewart on the offside extra cover. That would have been. Here comes Logan, defended away by Connors. 
the newsreader said something along the lines of, Ben Watts has the honour of being at the cricket. And I said, I thought I had the honour of commentating on the last wicket. Turns out, <laughs> Derbyshire's injured batsman decided he fancied to come in out. It's about at number 11. There's now two slips in play as Jordan Cox goes to join Zach Crawley behind Ollie Robinson, the wicketkeeper, as Logan Bowles and Connors gets in behind this one. End of the over. 180 for nine. 38. Oh, was left. What what amused me is that Neil Goddard has come out and marked the creases to the left of the pitch as we look. And bless him, Brooke Guest was sent out to the right by the umpire. So uh, where he where he'd gone, the creases hadn't been marked. Yeah, my newsreader introduced me by saying it's a tall order for the lower order batsmen. So, well, yeah, we've seen most Strong. of them, most of them have come and gone. Yeah. In fact. It's just Anish Dahl and the walking wounded Sam Connors. It's Bob Moore to Dahl. The field well spread. As if to say, go and get yourself a single if you like. We want to bowl at the other lad. Robinson's up to the stumps. Dahl driving back towards Bob Moore. By Cook. Runs through the quicksand at the far end of the ground. I assume it's quicksand, given the way he's running. He Swap sides and goes to point. I think that's just Nick Cook's running style. <laughs> Faster when he's walking. Pop more bowls. Defends up towards long on does Alan Starwin. There should be an easy single, but he opts not to take it. Kind of feels like we're delaying the inevitable here. Oh, I think so. But I wouldn't berate these two for not battling. No, and Alan Starr has done that better than anybody. I'd like to see a bit more of that. Pommel bowling to him. Again, an expert forward defensive stroke out towards cover. Yeah, it's something that's been sadly lacking in Derbyshire's uh, armoury this season. Fight. Tim bringing the field up now on the leg side. Decided now they want to keep Anish Dahl there as he hits a slower ball from Paul Moore and pushes it back towards the bowler. It's a strange period of cricket, this, isn't it, when it's almost entirely pointless. Yeah, it is somewhat bizarre. But why would, either of, why would either of these two give up their... Uh, Give up their wicket. Pommel bowls. Driven nicely by Alan Stahl. Beats the man at mid-off as well. Billings is going to chase it, but yeah, he is actually quick enough to go and get there. Dahl comes back for three. Perfect. So he'll be on the strike for the next over if Sam Connors can see things out here. Broadcast wanders off to square leg. Leaning's going to go in at third slip with Bell Drummond in the gully. Other than that, they've got fielders posted to invite a single for Connors, who tries to drive. <laughs> Gets a bit of an inside edge and it goes about half a metre. End the over from Podmore. Derbyshire is still out there and Refusing to go down without a fight. Certainly Alan Stahl having that attitude. 183 for nine. All right. <laughs> it's this horrible... I mean, the, the, if these two survive for the next 37 overs... Yeah, I'm kind of thinking, when are we, you know... You won't be able to talk at finals day. There was a, I've got a couple of slices of leftover pizza next door that I was thinking, yeah, should I... Is now a good time to... Eat one of these. <laughs> Logan Bowling from the city end. In behind it defensively, Anand Star. He doesn't look like he's going to get out. No, he doesn't, in fairness. Absolutely not, Anand He's 12 away from a half century and he's only got 
two, I think, in his career. I'm tempted to let you commentate on the ones that Dahl's facing. Okay. Logan in and bowls two and it's Dahl who gets a full length delivery and just about digs that one out. Wanting to be yorked by a left arm spinner, but stranger things have happened. High score of 106, of course, from last week, but he does, in fact, have it's reached half century four times in his career. The next delivery is pushed out up towards uh, cover and it'll take a single, which brings Sam Connors back on to strike. Dahl moves on to 39, 184 for nine now. At least they've gone past the halfway mark and they're going to have bring a, a helmet out here. For the fielder in that short leg. All sorts of fielders coming in to put pressure on uh, Sam Connors, the wounded batsman. Who will face the next delivery from James Logan. Eventually. At some point soon. There we go. Probably. <laughs> Logan with two slips, short leg, in and bowling, defended by Connors, into the onside. On not, not out, having produced a swashbuckling 39 in the first innings. Who says batsman can only bat one way? Logan bowls to him. And again, in behind this. Playing it back down the pitch. He's out to see how many balls he can face on one leg. Yeah. Logan fires one in quicker and he again manages to block it. End of another over. Ladies and gentlemen, since the schedule of the team, play may continue for up to half an hour before the end of the So we can carry on for half an hour. That's half nice. An hour. It looks like we're going to see Jack leaning over bowl. All right. Well, if they took tea, that'd be terrific. If these two could get them to tea, that would that would go down as a triumph in my book. For these two. Certainly something we did not expect to happen. No, indeed. Indeed not. Yeah, absolutely. Just looking... Um, I have this printed on my mind, really. Oh, Jack Leaning. Yeah, indeed, Jack Leaning. I think now would be a good time to bring out the stat. Last season in the Bob Willis Trophy, Sam Connors had a 55 ball five. Batting with uh, Lewis Deploy, who scored a roundabout. 50 in that same time. I've had a bunch of emails that have been flying in. Oh dear. Leaning balls to Dahl, who chops it away out towards the cover boundary. He's going to come back for a second. There's some good fielding out there in the distance. That's Logan sliding in. And they do come back for two, and Dahl moves into the 40s. He's on to 41. 186 for nine. Leaning in again, balls to Dahl, who just tries to dab this down to uh, third man, I think, and it bounced a little bit more than he'd been expecting and pushes it out into the offside. Zach Crawley comes around from slip to do the fielding. Zach Crawley's barely moved out of slip. Does he ever move out of slip? He waits there now as leaning balls, and that one is pushed down towards a short third man. They've run one. Is there going to be two there? There isn't. There isn't. Interesting. Mm. Uh, that would be at least three deliveries. You would have thought that Sam Connors has to face from golden arm leaning, as he's now going to be known. He does have a bit of a golden yeah. arm, in fairness. Yeah, I can imagine. And as Dahl has passed a thousand runs, all format for Derbyshire in his career during this innings. Thank you, Griff. Short leg going in. Billings is just working his field. Or reworking it. Crawley at slip as ever. Billings might be going into a second one. 
So yeah, two slips and a short leg plus a catching mid wicket for leaning bowling off spin around the wicket to Connors. Tosses this one up. Oh, beauty. Beats him on the outside edge. <laughs> Rolls his long sleeve shirt up a tad. Prepares to hold another off spinner. Two corners again beats him by angling the ball across the right handed batsman into the hands of Ollie Robinson, the keeper standing up to the stumps. Too good for him, really. Just needs to turn it a little less. Yeah. Or maybe just turn it, maybe. It's the lack of turn that's <laughs> causing him to beat the outside edge. He's bowling again. Oh, again beats the outside edge. That is three. Well, perfect delivery is really. Couldn't have asked for too much more from him. Apart from a wicket. End of the over, one, eight, seven for nine. Let me see if I can bang through a couple of emails very quickly. Yes. Steve saying, what happens if it rains Saturday for finals day? Originally, I thought it was asking me for the weather forecast. Sunday, surely. Yeah, there is yeah. a reserve day on the yeah. Sunday. Since yeah. the forecast earlier, I know, seems to suggest pretty 50-50 50 for, 50, 50 for both days. Yeah, I thought it was actually okay. Think, but don't worry about Don't worry about Saturday. Yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah, either way, he says, I'm looking forward to a few beers at the match. Bilbo lifting the trophy and Broad Street in the evening to celebrate. Well, Steve's confident. <laughs> Somebody booked his table. Yeah. Logan's going to bowl from the city end of the ground. He's been defended away into the offside. Andy getting in touch. Earlier this season, a broadsheet reporter likened James Logan's act action to that of someone changing a light bulb. Oh, OK. Let's have a look. <laughs> He's in <laughs> bowling. Pushed away. It is bizarre. I'll give you that. Changing a light bulb, I don't necessarily see it. It's, it's, I think it's changing a light bulb looks more orthodox than James Logan's action. Yes. Kester says, I've been listening for two hours and not we haven't yet had an update on the plague of Derby Daddy Longlegs. They seem to have gone for the time being. Yeah, I did have four right in front of my view at one point. Alan Stahl waiting. A couple of fielders have been brought up at cover and mid-wicket. <laughs> Guest is asking loads of questions about the Daddy Longnecks. How many are left? Landed on the window. Have any fallen off? Have they all still got wings? Oh, a bit of an edge here from... Oh! oh. No. Their guest was running, leaning, saying... Oh, he was holding on to the ball. The st I don't think there is a stop royalty to Daddy Longleg society, Kester, in truth. Um... Lawn saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, that that video of the the twos, one as this one's pushed away out towards point. They again think about the single. I'm assuming this video is the same as the one that you showed me earlier on. The oh, no, this is another bowling action. All right, just been sent to video. It's not Cameron Carter. No, it's a left arm spinner." Logan Bowles, dull, trying to give himself room. And then he's managed to keep... Uh... Oh, no, he hasn't. It's not the end of the over. This spin ball, he's doing some... Oh? He's doing a couple of squats and then... Well, it's Monty Python, isn't it? Surely. That's a, that's a bizarre run-up. He's yeah. kind of doing some lunges and squats in his mid-run-up as Logan Bowles again. It's pushed away out towards point. Dull hasn't managed to pinch a single, so... Potentially here, Kent could get a hole over at Sam Connors. Leaning's going to continue. If indeed they need a hole over. Well, true. Michael Bell in Kennington saying, interesting to hear there'll be something on social media tomorrow about James Logan's Undoubtedly interesting bowling action. Yeah, we teased that earlier, didn't we? Watching with my wife, she said he could easily get a job as a traffic policeman. <laughs> so this is another delivery from Jack Leaning that's beaten the outside edge. six of these, aren't we? <laughs> of Sam Connor's bat. He says, she is also a lefty and her action is like watching an octopus climb a set of stairs. <laughs> that's a fantastic description. Leaning bowls. Connors there we go. Defends with the bat. There we go. Pushes it back down the pitch. 
Mike says you weren't entirely wrong about Chelmsford. The Romans did build a fort there in the first century, and the town okay. grew up around it, but no, it wasn't the capital. No. Again, leaning bowls, Connors defends, and allows me to read out another email. Ben also pointing out that it was Colchester, not Chelmsford. Okay, okay, I've got it now, I've got it now. <laughs> T delayed by eight overs or 30 minutes, whichever is later. Oh, inside edge from Connors. The short leg field is in front of Square and not behind, and it goes past him and down towards. Well, T will be later with the two uh, spinners. 45. Running. You would have thought. Leaning in again, just drags his one through quicker. It's one hand, one bounce for Billings that slip as it's angled in his direction. But Connor's again keeping it out. It's coming around the wicket. Over the wicket. Over the wicket. Leaning bowls. Tosses this one up. Pushed away. Out towards point. Connors manages to bat through the entire over from Jack Leaning. Well, the 10th wicket partnerships have frustrated teams in the past, haven't they? I'd have been tempted to put one of the quicks on I for think that I over. would have been. Yeah, I would have been. No, and you're guaranteed to be bowling at uh, a wounded animal. In fairness, Leaning has made him play every single ball, pretty much. Yeah. That was only eight away from a half century as well, and it'd be nice for him to get to his half century if he possibly can. He certainly deserves it. Yeah. That Logan bowls to him. Oh, it's off an edge, but it bounces just in front of Jack Leaning. Trying to play the ball, moving into the leg side and cutting it away. Top edge, leaning at quite a deep backward point or a deep gully. Bounced about ten yards in front of him. Logan balls and again he goes back into his crease and pushes it out into the offside. The octopus climbing a set of stairs <laughs> is an image I can't get out of my head now. The underwater stairs, presumably. Yeah. Climbing up or down? The octopuses that can go through a sieve and reform on the other side. His next delivery is launched down the ground by Anna's Dahl for four runs. He's had enough. And he moves on to 46 now. Derbyshire up into the 190s, 191 for nine. It was a safe enough shot. Most of the fielders are within uh, 15, 20 yards of him. Thought he might have missed you at first. Mm, I thought he had. <laughs> Hit it clean enough to go over Gilchrist's head. There's a lot of good balls, and this one's along the floor, down the ground. There's a shot at the stumps that only just misses Dahl. He is quick, but he might have been in trouble there. Yeah, don't be running quick singles to Billings. No, oh, didn't miss by much. Billings has had two shots at the stumps today, missed them both. He's got his hands on his hips at the moment. I don't think you can quite believe it. That was risky. He's moved on to 47 as Dahl now, three away from a half century, which means that he's got an extra purpose in trying to stay out there, in fairness, as... Uh, Sam Connors and Sam Billings is going to come up and field a silly mid off now. They're going to absolutely surround him. The Kent fielders. Caught fair play, Skip. He's just lobbed two sets of sunglasses at Ollie Robinson. Which Jack Leaning is going to prop on his head. On the back of his cap. So Billings not really in his shin pads. No. Logan Bowles. Connor softly defends into the offside. Fair play, Sam Billings, not making someone else do this job. We might have asked for volunteers. <laughs> Jordan Cox is already at short leg. Logan with that peculiar action in a bowling to Connors who defends. End of another over. Mm. One nine, two for nine. We might get to do a half past update of this, right? Remarkably. Two batsmen in conversation. A little punch of the gloves. Connors has said, don't worry, uh, Nudge, I'll get you to 50. And it will be Jack leaning to continue around the wicket to Anna's Dahl. All his last two overs pretty much exclusively at uh, Sam Connors. Still two slips in place. Sweeps on. So leaning is in. It's left alone by Dahl to go past the off stump. 
Jonathan Seller has got in touch to say there's still Daddy Long Legs at the other end of the ground, and C18 has got three of them on it. All right. Yeah. I'll be paid. Leading into Dahl, who uh, clips this one up to Long On. Picks up a single, moves to 48, 193 for nine. Takes the single. Mm. Decided that he's happy for corners to take. Jack leaning. But Connors can't get his bat anywhere near the ball, can he? It's fairly safe. That's one way not to get out. Just cover up your stumps and yeah. he doesn't bowl it straight. Leaning in. Connors does have to play a shot because it is straight, but he softly defends out into the point area. Leaning had come around the wicket for that delivery. He's now going to come back over the wicket. Kent trying to buy this final wicket. As much as anything, it's a loopy one from leaning. He's not going to play an aggressive shot, is he, Sam Connors? I don't no, think. No, it doesn't look like it. One would assume that that's because it would. He's in too much. What, the ankle's in too much pain to kind uh, of pivot on it. Left alone outside the off stump as it's fired in, a bit flatter. His right ankle from memory. The adrenaline obviously got him through his previous innings. He now switches to come around the wicket again. In and bowling. Defended off the stumps by Connors and Alan I was right to have faith in him to play out that over from Jack Leaning. One, nine, three for nine. Just received a message that says, according to my partner son, Daddy Longlegs are the most venomous insects and can kill a human being with its poison, but they don't have teeth strong enough all the mindset to break the skin, so don't eat one. <laughs> uh, that's based on a 13-year-old, so uh, I, think we're, I think we are now replete with uh, Daddy Longlegs information. I mean, I love the notion that... I didn't think they had mouths, that's why they don't eat. This is the first delivery of a new over. He's turned into the leg side, Dahl's run the first one quickly, he's going to come back for the second and get to the half century. Well done, Anoj Dahl, he deserves that. He's batted nicely in this innings. He's batted nicely in the last three matches. He's showing his worth as a first-class cricketer is Anoj Dahl. And he passes 50 for the fifth time in his career. And on one occasion, he's gone on to make 100. Next delivery is a rather agriculturally carted out into the offside. He moves to 51. 196 for nine. Taking the single, he was... Running it hard, but never really likely to get two there. That sun's hot now, isn't it? Too hot, I can barely see. On that. 85 balls, four fours. Logan just swipes away an insect, probably a daddy long legs. Before he comes into bowl, Connors defends. Daniel Bell Drummond's now warming up at mid wicket. Holds a bit of seam up medium pace he might be the man to try and buy this last wicket for Kent certainly looks as if he might have a go at least it's Logan bowls and again Connors watchfully plays this away Logan looks at the sky going what do I have to do to get this man out those of us who, who, who planned our next toilet visit at T well, those of us who were 58 and who'd done that I was planning my pizza eating as this one's defended away. It might be going with a pea as well. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Is there? laughs> picks up at cover. This is remarkable. It's all rather inconvenient, everyone, this. Well, it is really, isn't it? Well battered uninched, are they? And Connors showing real bravery out there. Defending this Yorker length delivery, really, from James Logan. End of the over. I'm going to nip off to do an update for BBC Radio Ken mm. that I must admit I didn't think I'd be doing. No. No. I'm now <laughs> yeah, listening in to Radio Derby for the queue for the update. Who would have thought this game would still be going on now? Not me. Hundred and forty five more runs required to get it below hundred by T. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Oh, he's going he's going for his pizza next door, is Ben Watts. He's going for his pizza. Oh look at that. Wow. 
leaning bowling to Dahl. Dahl pushes out into the offside. They're going to go through for a run, so they're quite happy for leaning to bowl at uh, Sam Connors, who's yet to get off the mark. Having faced 34 deliveries, all 21 runs of this partnership have either been scored by Dahl. I think they have. I think he was on 30 when Ben Aitchison was out, so... He's got all 21 runs and has moved to 52. In fact, there must have been a lag by because it is 52. To Dallas Dahl. Oh, then there we go. He's off the mark. That's the way to get off the mark. Well played, Sam Connors. He's just launched one out into the leg side for four runs. Derbyshire's 200 is up. 201 for nine. There's still 140 away from victory yes apologies to Colston <laughs> I wonder how many other people switched off when uh, we said that Kent had won leaning is in balls back into his crease goes Connors defends it out into the offside, there's no run. Bell Drummond continues to warm up. Derbyshire 201 for nine. Leading in again, this one is defended out into the offside. Harry Podmore does the fielding on this occasion. Two deliveries to go in the over. Partnership worth 26. Next delivery. Whoa, he tries a dab and he's furious with himself. Because that was close to the edge of his bat as it went through to Ollie Robinson. Around the wicket for leaning now. And, uh, there is a, a change in the field. So, uh, quite correctly, Sam Connors just steps away. And they bring Bell Drummond in to slip. They have a leg slip as well. I think that's Sam Billings. So short leg, leg slip and two slips for Sam Connors. Last ball of the leaning over. He props forward. It's into the ground. It's stopped by Bell Drummond. And at the end of the over, Derbyshire are 201 for nine. And as Dahl on 52, Sam Connors on four. And are we going to see, we are, we're going to see Daniel Bell Drummond bowl for the first time in this match from the city end. He'll be bowling initially to Anuj Dell. The three batsmen out there all touch gloves and all the rest of it. Bell Drummond with his medium pace. Well done. They've spotted it next door as well. I haven't done an update yet, so I shall leave you in a moment. No worries. What well, they spotted next door? Hmm? What well, they spotted? Well, Daniel, oh, Daniel Bell yeah, yeah, bowling too. And there's Dahl. Oh, that one keeps low. Keeps low. And he sort of reaches for it. And it didn't miss the off stump by much or the inside edge of his bat. Daniel Bell Drummond's one that I always find it quite amusing when I see him without a hat or a helmet on. <laughs> I just don't expect him to be completely clean-shaven head. Many of us are. See him bowling his medium pace. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? That one is defended by Dahl. Yeah, I just always see him with a cap on or a helmet. Apart from when he has the rare opportunity to turn his arm over which he is getting at the moment. Amazing, really, that Derbyshire were 102 for seven. And now 201 for nine. And Anjadal helping show some real resistance. Playing defensively to this one from Daniel Bell Drummond. Kent so far in this second innings. Podmore, 14 overs, two for 48. Grant Stewart, 9 overs, 2 for 45. Gilchrist, 10 overs, 3 for 30. Jazz Singh. Two 
242 from 10 overs. That was Roman Bowles, and it's nudged away into the gap on the onside. They're going to run one, they're going to come back for two. Logan's board nine overs, none for 26. Leaning four overs, none for nine. Donald Drummond conceding his first runs there. So that one is turned away into the onside. To a three for nine dial on 54. Donald Drummond bowls down the leg side. Marsh, BBC Radio Kent's presenter, saying, you know, it's serious when they've delayed T. We have indeed caught to the stage of the game where we could have had T on the final day, but the one wicket needed. Dahl defending again. Players still out there. to see Connors get off the mark in the previous over, swinging that one away to the boundary for four. Dahl has got 54, 203 for nine. Jack Leaning's going to carry on, wheeling away. Thanks to those of you that have been in touch over the last, well, three days, because we didn't have any cricket yesterday, did we? Self Ben Watts of BBC Radio Kent and Dave Fletcher, BBC Radio Derby. Loved having your correspondence, and for those of you that have been watching and listening as well, appreciate you as this is bopped down the ground by Sam Connors over the top. Grant Stewart chasing it. And does just hold it in. There's a chance for a run out to the partner's end. Brooke Guest was scampering across the pitch, which is about nine to the right of the actual one that we're playing on. Made just ground. Stuart hurled it into leaning. It's got Anand Dahl back on strike. Connor's three runs run for him. As leaning fires it in on the stumps and Dahl the fence from around the wicket, the off spinner operating to the right handed batsman. Field spread in the Derby sunshine. Long on now, one sort of deepish mid on, shortish mid wicket, and then a more orthodox mid wicket. Deep square leg, man behind square on the on side, a slip, keeper up to the stumps, point cover mid off. Stuart's moving further up as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's just creeping up. Prevent the single. Leaning bowls, Dahl goes back and pushes out towards point. We play out this over and we could end up at T. Yeah. You've already had yours, haven't you? Well, I've got one slice still to go. Okay. Leaning bowls. Dahl looks to cut. Has he edged that behind? No. Leaning asks. Ollie Robinson asks. Nobody else does that. Nobody's really convinced. No. No. I would have been surprised if that had been given. Dahl might have been as well. I feel like when the moment arrives, it's not going to be quite as resounding as... I managed to make it last time. Leaning bowls at edge. Oh, wide of the man at point. It was a flame drive from Anand Dahl. Logan will chase it down towards third man. It's going to go for four. One stage, it looked like it could have been catchable for the fielder. Feels like it was a full stroke. Probably aiming more through extra cover. Dahl realised it'll be T soon and that will be pointless, so he's going to try and get out. <laughs> What's going on? Leaning wide on the crease to bowl to him, nudges out towards Sam Billings into the onside. End of the over. That's T. That is T. That is T. That is remarkable. Derbyshire have managed to get to T on the final day of a game and still not be completely defeated. Uh, they will lose this game after T. They're 131 away from uh, their target, but 210 for nine. Dahl 58, Connors seven with a runner. Uh, it's been a great effort by Aitchison, who shared that 70-run stand for the eighth wicket with Dahl, by Dahl himself, and now by Sam Connors. 
Um, remarkably, they've got to tea, which was delayed by half an hour. Uh, it seems a little absurd to go off for tea at this stage, but go off they are, and uh, uh, so are we, and we'll see you in about uh, 15 minutes.
Kent are on the verge of victory, but they've been on the verge of victory for quite some time. T was delayed by half an hour, half an hour due to uh, the last pair. Sam Connors, who we didn't even think would be batting, and Anuj Dahl putting on an unbroken stand of 35 from 85 balls. Dahl has passed his half century, the fifth time he's passed 50 in his first class career. I've never seen Nathan Gilchrist ball from the city end. Whoever keeps finding from Ireland, you can stop. He's going to be uh, Nathan Gilchrist from the city end. Ben Watts has gone missing. Don't know where he's gone. So he might miss the Denouement, one, which would be a shame, having sat here for the thick end of four days. He's on his way in now, is Gilchrist, bowling to Sam Connors, who defends out into the offside. Ben's here. We always knew he would be. 2.10 for nine. So one way or another, there'll be an update coming up for Radio Derby at four o'clock into the... Oh, no, it'll be just after four o'clock, of course, because it's the... Uh, it's the... What's it? Speaker bulletin as this next <laughs> next delivery. That's how technical I am. He's defended by Sam Connors. Smart speaker, that was the phrase I was searching for. They do a smart speaker bulletin at four o'clock will they last through until the sports news at 25 to 5 well it's odds against but it was odds against getting to tea in the first place let alone extending it by half an hour As next delivery to Connors is defended again he's done well there Gilchrist kept out once more Dahl on 58, Connors on 7, 131 away from victory, but only with the one wicket, and one of the wickets out there is walking wounded. In comes Gilchrist, short delivery, almost sits Sam Connors down on his backside. That would have been a, a quite unpleasant for his uh, damaged ankle. Yeah, he's just holding it in the air now. That would have been, that was a terrific short delivery from Gilchrist. Connors waits and oh he's bowled him this game is over as Gilchrist bowls Sam Connors in the first over after T and Kent win by 130 runs it was a terrific fight from Derbyshire from lunch onwards but sadly the fight has ended and Kent, well, they've been on top in this game pretty much from the word go, it has to be said. And they deserve their third win of the Division 3 campaign. They'll play against Middlesex in the final match in Division 3 next week, starting on Tuesday. They've got T20 finals day before that, of course. Derbyshire go down to Ho for their final uh, match of the season. Still looking for their first win and almost certainly at the bottom of the table. Kent have won this one by 130. Dahl, 58. Connors bowled uh, by Nathan Gilchrist for seven. Thanks very much for your company. Thanks to Ben Watts as well, who is updating listeners to Radio Kent. We'll be back. Well, Radio Kent will be back with cricket on Saturday. That finals day at Edgebaston. And then it's Tuesday for the final round of championship matches. We'll see you soon. <laughs>